Decades ago, a dimensional storm broke out on Earth, and a large number of alien creatures and fictional monsters were discovered. These dimensional beings were categorized into four classes, mortal, legend, epic, and mythical, and their destructive power was beyond the imagination of humans. However, even though humans became the bottom feeder of the food chain, they had the potential to raise their constitution and evolve into higher life forms by gathering primordial energy and merging it into their bodies. And the humans named the process cultivation. Other than cultivating primordial energies, there is also another way that greatly sped up the evolution of humans, which was hunting the dimensional beings and extracting dimensional crystals from their bodies and absorbing the primordial power from those crystals. However, the dungeons where these crystals were found were extremely dangerous. And these were things the class teacher was talking about. He then called out to Zhou Wen, who once was a genius even praised by the former headmaster. But now it seemed as though the former headmaster had misjudged. Zhou Wen, who was caught playing games, understood what the teacher wanted and thus left the classroom. Thus, he got out of the school campus and went to the stadium and took out his mobile. Zhou Wen had his own reasons for playing games on his smartphone. And this mysterious phone was the reason he stopped paying attention to class and stopped cultivating. He then pricked his fingers and dropped his blood on the phone screen to open up a dungeon game. The game is unbelievably connected to him, and upgrading the abilities of his avatar in the game also upgraded his own abilities in real life. Not only does he not need to risk his life by going to the dungeons, but also he can level up faster than going into an actual dungeon. However, his teachers thought differently. Zhou Wen was dubbed as a genius for cultivating primordial energy at the age of 16, and everyone thought that he would place first in the upcoming test. But unexpectedly, one month ago, a transfer student, moreover a girl, challenged Zhou Wen in a fight, and the result was the ball-crushing defeat of Zhou Wen. Everyone was shocked as Zhou Wen was the strongest in their batch, and everyone thought that because of that incident, Zhou Wen was depressed and lost all motivation and started gaming all day. However, Zhou Wen never cared what someone else thought of him after getting the taste of this mysterious game. This time he got another energy crystal as his loot for defeating the ant, and when his game avatar picked up the crystal, his own body in real life was able to absorb the crystal. Zhou Wen was also able to see his stats through the mobile app, and one month ago, his stats were average, but now, after playing the game for a month, his stats have grown fast. He knew that if he had cultivated through the meditation techniques, it would take years before he could raise his stats. The only regret is the crystals dropped in the game would directly be absorbed by him, not giving him a choice to sell them on the market to get rich. When playing more, he faced a mutated red ant whose speed was faster than normal ants. Do you want to know the name of this manga, along with all the manga names of the recaps we did in our channel? How about also the chapter numbers our recaps end? You can simply ask the names in our Discord community for free or become a donor to get them all in one place. You can either be a donor in Patreon or be a member in our YouTube channel. Just scan this QR code or go to the link in the description to become a donor. Moreover, becoming a donor automatically makes you a VIP member of our Discord server with over tens of thousands of members. But it was not impossible to defeat the ant. But the problem was, it was not alone. And just at that time, footsteps were heard as a tomboy with red hair neared him. He was pissed that she was coming towards him and knew she was looking for him. She then told him to join her team for the test exam. While he was trying his hardest to keep the ant in check, he asked the reason for her inviting him, who was no longer the same Zhou Wen. But she said that she doesn't believe that Zhou Wen became weaker just because he was lazy for a month. She then also told him that Ang Jing, the woman that defeated Zhou Wen, had transferred out of the school. And she also told him that Ang Jing seemed to specially come to beat him as her arrival and leave were very sudden. But Zhou Wen said he had never met in Jing before that day. Before leaving, she said that her team would be training together during the cultivation class and told him to join them. Finally, Zhou Wen was able to defeat the mutant Vigor Ant, but more mutant ants attacked all of a sudden. But his avatar didn't escape, instead picked up the crystal and then died. And when the crystal dropped from the red ant, it was absorbed by his body, and he felt a sharp pain all over and felt that information about a skill was imprinted into his mind. He found out that the crystal he picked up this time granted him skills. And sure enough, when he opened his stat window on mobile, he saw that the Essence Energy Skill tab that once used to be empty, 
was now filled with Divine Vigor Fist skill of rank 7. Zhou Wen then went to the place where the team was supposed to practice. And when the team members saw that it was Zhou Wen that Feng Ruoxi recruited, they were suspicious and said that Zhou Wen didn't train for an entire month and had fallen behind in terms of strength and he might drag the team down. Then one guy recommended Zheng Yi and told her that Zheng Yi was better and added that Zhou Wen and Zhen Yi could compete to see who was more fitted to be in the team. Zhou Wen then said that they could test their strength without fighting through the school's strength tester. Zheng Yi mocked him, saying he was afraid to fight in combat. But in truth, Zhou Wen was afraid because he might cripple Zheng Yi since he knew his power grew way faster due to the smartphone. When they went to the school test bench, the group tested their strength one by one. The arrogant blonde guy tested first and scored seven in punch strength. That was the stat Zhou Wen had, even before he got the mysterious phone. Then it was Zhou Wen's turn. When Zhou Wen punched, it was accompanied by a loud boom. And the class teacher was at that point near the test bench room, so he peeked through the door and saw that it was Zhou Wen that punched. Everyone was surprised by the score that Zhou Wen got. The teacher who had thought that Zhou Wen had given up was surprised, and was wondering if Zhou Wen was actually practicing hard during the night, and thus was tired and sleepy during the class. The blonde guy was pissed, so he again took the test. And this time, he used his essence skill to the fullest and got a score of 11. He then looked at Zhou Wen, asking him to do the same. But Zhou Wen asked if the test bench breaks, then who is going to take the responsibility? In reply, the blonde guy said that he would pay for all the damage done to the test bench. So Zhou Wen didn't hold back much, and prepared to punch the crap out of the test. Zhou Wen then used the essence energy skill that he got from Vigorant for the first time. Everyone was shocked silly, including the teacher. Then the class teacher again reminisced the words of the former dean. The team then praised him, and the blonde guy said that he would pay for it. When Zhou Wen was going back home, he remembered Fang Ruoxi's words as she said that in Jin was of legendary rank. But Zhou Wen couldn't figure out how he offended legendary class women for her to come to his school personally and defeat him. He then got a phone call from his dad, who told him that Zhou Wen was going to get a new stepmom as he was going to marry. Zhou Wen was happy and asked when the wedding was happening. His dad said that it would be one week later in Luoyan. Then Zhou Wen said that his college entrance exam is in this week, so he wouldn't be able to attend. Zhou Wen then asked his dad about the cookie box that was in the closet. His dad said that the cookie company no longer sells cookies. Zhou Wen then told him that there was a phone inside that box and asked if he knew who put it there. His dad then said that the phone was from his grandpa. Then his dad told him a brief story about his grandpa, whom Zhou Wen heard very little about. His grandpa was a carpenter during the reconstruction of the Gita city. And one day, during work, an ancient dried up well was dug out in the construction site deep in the night. The workers were curious about the glowing well, so they went down the well and discovered an ancient rotting wooden case. And within the box was a phone. The phone was on at the beginning, thus giving intense light out of the broken box. But when they touched the phone, it ran out of battery, and they weren't able to charge it since there was no charging port either. Soon the workers lost interest in it, but his grandpa took it and stored it in the tin box. Thus Zhou Wei was sure that the phone had never been turned on before him. After the call ended, Zhou Wen planned to find the location his dad told him about in the future to see if he could find anything else. In the next days, Zhang Wei played games the whole night and slept during class and also played games when his teammates were practicing. In the school, a mysterious man visited, and just after that, Zhou Wen's teammates left the team one after another. Even Fang Ruoxi was forced to disband the current team and warned that someone wanted to deal with him. Then his class teacher called him and told him about the person named An Tianzuo and asked if Zhou Wen really didn't know the guy. The teacher was perplexed as it didn't make sense for the overseer to criticize Zhou Wen if Zhou Wen didn't even know him. He then gave him an explanation about politics, and said that Earth League is split in four districts, North, South, East, and West. And their Guoda city is just a tiny city in the East District. And despite An Tian Zuo being only a young overseer, he holds the real power in the East area's military. He then told him not to think about it anymore and to find a team to take the physical test for the entrance examination, and warned him that tomorrow was the last day for registering for a team. He then recommended him a student called Li Xuan, 
who might take him on the team if he helped them with the test. Zhuo Wen had no choice, so he agreed and told his teacher to contact Li Xuan. Later, when going home, he asked his dad if he knew the person called in Tianzuo, and then all the mysteries were revealed as his dad said that Ang Tianzuo was going to be his stepbrother, and Ang Jin was going to be his younger sister after he married his stepmom. So he quickly asked his dad if his step-siblings agreed to let their mom marry his dad. His dad said that his step-siblings were very happy and respectful, hearing his dad was going to marry their mom. But their act with Zhou Wen didn't make sense. Zhou Wen was suspicious that the siblings didn't accept the marriage from their hearts. In the end, Zhou Wen still knew that it all happened because he was still too weak. So in the next few days, he hunted only the mutated vigor ants. But sadly, the mutant ants didn't drop any more skill crystals. And just as he was cursing his luck, he saw that the last mutant ant that he killed dropped an egg-like thing. He then found out that the egg was a beast companion egg. But from what he knew, mortal level humans rarely have companion beasts. So he was happy that he got one. And when he picked it up in the game, he felt a different kind of pain in real life this time. After the pain subsided, he saw a blood-colored mark appearing on the back of his hand. He then appraised the ant and saw that its every stat was at level 9 except the agility, which was at 5, and its essence skill was a whopping rank 9 skill. Curious, he summoned the beast and saw that it appeared as a glove in his hand. He guessed that his gloves gave him an extra boost in strength. Then he fully summoned the beast as the blood-red energy gathered in the surrounding. Then he saw the real appearance of the beast, which looked much more domineering than in the game. The next day, his class teacher was caring enough to drive him to Li Xuan place. Soon they reached the Li family mansion. There he saw the playboy of Li Xuan, who was the second young master of the Li family. Teacher Lao Shu then introduced Zhou Wen as the helper for the test. Li Xuan said that although he wasn't lacking experts to hire, he would still let Zhou Wen join him as he was recommended by Lao Shu. Teacher Lao Shu then left Zhou Wen with Li Xuan. After Lao Shu left, Li Xuan told Zhou Wen to obediently follow behind their group and not to cause any trouble. Zhou Wen nodded. Li Xuan then invited Zhou Wen for drinks, but Zhou Wen rejected him saying he doesn't drink. However, Li Xuan was mocking Zhou Wen in his heart, for he also believed that Zhou Wen was no longer the genius that he once used to be. He then told one of his girls to seduce Zhou Wen, who was playing games. But Zhou Wen didn't even look at the girl. The girl was, at this point, annoyed and forced herself on him, so Zhou Wen, who was playing the game attentively, instinctively pushed her away. In the end, his game avatar was killed. Then everyone went to sleep. But Zhou Wen was still playing with the phone. He challenged the whole night but still was unable to defeat the flying ant. Even though the silver-winged ant was not of legendary grade, it still was very hard to kill. His divine vigor fist skill was very powerful, but the speed of the fist was very slow. Thus he needs to improve this technique even more. The next day, everyone took the theoretical exam. And after that, the students were brought to Gidi Ancient City, a dimensional zone-infested city near the Gidi City. Due to the influence of the dimensional zone, the vegetation outside the ancient city was abnormally luxuriant. Stationed outside the ancient city were armed soldiers with tanks patrolling the area, and without a pass, none is allowed to get into the ancient city, and the college entrance exam's physical test would be held in this city. After reaching the city, when they stopped at the gate of the ancient city, Zhou Wen noticed that the phone in his pocket was vibrating, which never happened before. When he took out the phone, he saw a camera app on the phone that had suddenly been installed, so he tried to take a photo of the magnificent gate, but then he saw that his camera was focusing on a symbol on the gate. Then he saw that another dungeon was installed in his phone, apart from the old ant nest dungeon. He then immediately pricked his fingers and dropped his blood on the screen. Then he entered the dungeon that looked very similar to the ancient city. There he saw skeleton soldiers that rushed towards him, but the skeleton wasn't as strong as those red ants. And as soon as he slew it, he got a skill crystal. Thus, he used the skill crystal and got skeleton palm skill. He then used his pet ant to ride through the city and killed many skeletons one after another. However, he didn't get anything else except that skill stone after grinding for so long. Then he saw a skeleton horde led by a skeleton on a horse. Before his avatar could do anything, the skeleton rushed and killed him in an instant, and it was game over. He didn't play it anymore and looked at the city gate in real life. 
Then he saw Anjing, who suddenly gave him a USB drive and said that his dad gave it to him. She didn't even call his dad dad. Instead, she called him uncle. Before she left, she insulted him, saying that no matter how much resources people use on waste like Zhou Wen, he would never get more talented, and said that the An family doesn't welcome a weakling like Zhou Wen. After she left, Zhou Wen again met with Li Xuan and the rest of the team. Li Xuan again told him to just relax and follow the rest of the team. The rest of the team then promised Li Xuan that they would do their best to get first place in the exam. Before the exam was about to start, Fang Ruoxi also came and saw Zhou Wen. When the door to the dungeon opened, the referee said that the more crystals one gets, the more they would score, and only by killing the skeletons inside could they get crystals. When Zhou Wen entered with his team, he noticed that everything there was similar to the dungeon that he played on the phone. The group hired by Li Xuan was indeed good, as they cleared the skeletons smoothly. Zhou went again to check on his dungeon from his phone, and matched every layout with the ancient city, and found out that it was very very similar. But if everything was so similar that meant the skeleton general on horseback that killed him in the game in one shot, is also here. But according to the map from the phone, the exam area was still a bit far away from that skeleton general, so he wasn't afraid. But right then, the blonde of their team suggested that they ran out of skeletons, and if they wanted more scores, then they need to go deeper. So Zhou Wen tried his best to persuade Li Xuan against the idea. But Li Xuan thought Zhou Wen was scared, and so told him to stay there while they go deeper. The other group members also chimed in, and said that there won't be much danger since the college had scouted the surrounding area beforehand. Thus, his only choice was to get stronger, and defeat the skeleton in the game first. He couldn't also just leave Li Xuan there, since he would be held accountable by the powerful Li family. Thus, he followed the team from behind and tried to defeat the Skeleton General in-game. He tried to memorize the attack pattern of the Skeleton General but the only weakness he found was its speed. It was not very fast all the time, but when it uses its skill, it becomes really fast. When he was thinking, the team encountered more and more Skeletons, and kept picking up the Crystals. So Zhou went again tried to persuade them, but as expected, they were hell-bent on going deeper. Thus he made up some bullshit and said that since young he had the ability to predict danger, but they still didn't buy his bullshit. And just at that time, the other member backstabbed Li Xuan and his teammate. But Li Xuan's wound recovered quickly with a blood-colored aura. Zhang Hao then was surprised by Li Xuan's cultivation skill that healed his wound so fast. Apart from energy essence skills obtained from the crystals, there exists another type of skills which are not obtained from the crystals. And those were cultivation methods. And every cultivation technique has a limit. But the limit of the Khanate divine art of Li Xuan is very high, and could make him reach the mythical class. But the skill would no longer work if the one practicing it is not a virgin. And if one loses his innocence while practicing the technique, all the efforts would be wasted. But Zhou Wen couldn't imagine Li Xuan to be a virgin. The injured teammate cursed his other friend for betraying them for Li Mo Bao. But the guy said that since Li Xuan and Li Mo Bo were brothers, they needed to settle this sooner or later, for the heir could only be one person. He again attacked, but Li Xuan dodged. And it turned out that Zhang Hao was a very powerful guy too, as he had a legendary stage companion beast. But the team was surprised since Zhang Hao was just a mortal warrior, but he had a legendary beast as a companion. But it was possible if a legendary stage expert transferred their own companion beast to a mortal stage warrior at the cost of their life. So the guy quickly rushed to finish off his target, Li Xuan. But Li Xuan also used his own companion beast and used it as a glove, and held the blade of Zhang Hao. Then his companion beast became his body armor, as he said that he was not the same as Zhang Hao, and didn't use such cruel methods to get a legendary beast. Seeing that the target was stronger than his capacity, Zhang Hao escaped, and Li Xuan chased after him. But they were heading straight towards the skeleton general's location. But Zhou Wen had no way to help them, as he was weakest among them, and thus he entered the game again to find a method to deal with the skeleton warrior. And as he kept fighting it, he was able to improve his survivability against it. But he felt that the skeleton general already noticed the two, as he heard the strong battle sound. But he found a weak spot of the skeleton general from the game, and it might be his key to defeating the skeleton. When he went to where the battle sound was heard, he saw the signs of destruction from the place, and saw Li Xuan sitting there tired. But he also saw the skeleton general nearby. The difference between the game and reality was very noticeable. 
He then noticed that Jiang Hao wasn't being attacked by the skeleton, and guessed that he was using another type of companion beast to avoid the aggro. Then the attack began. Then Li Xuan created some kind of shield to deflect the attack. But Jiang Hao, the traitor didn't sit idle and also attacked. Zhou Wen was frustrated because, if this goes on, then Li Xuan would die, and if Li Xuan died, then he would be left alone to defend himself. So, Zhou Wen told Li Xuan that he have a way to defend against the monster, but Li Xuan have to take care of Jian Hao. Li Xuan had no choice to believe in him as the situation was serious. And as such, he went to deal Jian Hao, and Zhou Wen provoked the skeleton general and followed the patterns that he used in the game to dodge. His balls were almost crushed and penetrated by the skeleton, but such was the only way to dodge. It wasn't as easy as the game as even the slightest mistake could lead to death. But Zhou Wen was suspicious as the weakness didn't seem to work. Meanwhile, when Jiang Hao was distracted by Zhou Wen's ability to stall the skeleton, Li Xuan took advantage of it and landed a heavy blow to him. But Jiang Hao summoned his companion beast and released it to trap Li Xuan for a while. Then he went for Zhou Wen and wanted to kill Zhou Wen first, but his attack was dodged by Zhou Wen. Zhou Wen then used his own companion beast as a hand glove and pushed Jiang Hao towards the attack pattern of the skeleton general, and so Jiang Hao was penetrated by the thick pole of the skeleton general. And when Jian Hao died, his companion beast also became very weak and died. Then Li Xuan fought with the skeleton, and Zhou Wen was trying his best to deal a death blow to the skeleton. But his attack didn't work much, and every time the skeleton general wanted to attack Zhou Wen, Li Xuan blocked it. Zhou Wen then noticed a fracture on the head of the skeleton. Thus he aimed for it, and used his awl to land a heavy blow on the skull. And just like that, the skeleton general was beheaded, and became a companion beast egg. Li Xuan then told Zhou Wen, that he could take the egg as he was the reason for him to be alive right now, and Li Xuan already have a legendary beast companion, so he wasn't in need of it anymore. He then warned Zhou Wen that his strength was not enough to hatch a legendary beast. Zhou Wen nodded. Then Li Xuan asked how he got his companion beast. But Zhou Wen said that it was only a mortal level beast. But Li Xuan couldn't believe it, as it's very hard to use an ordinary companion beast as armor than the legendary beasts. And that meant that ordinary level symbiotic beasts is rare than legendary level beasts. And just like that, they walked out of the dungeon and Zhou Wen bade them goodbye and left on the bus. After he arrived at the bus stop, he met an old man who chatted with him for a while, and after that gave him a qi cultivation technique in a letter. Zhou Wen was suspicious, but the old man said it was thousand times better than his current cultivation techniques. But Zhou Wen was still suspicious, since he does not believe that the technique is given away by the old man without any catch. So he left, but when he was leaving, he was forcefully brought back by the old man, and found out that the old man was Jing Dioxian, and from the history books in their class, he knew that such a name only belonged to the most ruthless and terrifying man in human history. He was renowned for killing 27 epic grade people one after another from the Federation. Thus, Zhou Wen had no choice but to accept it. So he took it and waited for the old man to leave first. And just as he was about to leave, people from the Federation came and started searching the area where the old man was. So he quickly escaped and reached his home. After the shower, he slept soundly and kept the beast egg and the technique given by the old man nearby. But he had a nightmare of bloody hands grabbing and pushing him down into the depths of hell. When he woke up, he saw that the technique from the old man was shining its name on the cover, but it didn't have any reaction when he touched it. And just like every day, he began playing his games, but he was still unable to defeat the skeleton general. He was only able to defeat the skeleton general in reality with the help of Li Xuan, he also noticed that he was feeling dizzy due to using too much blood on the game. So he searched for ways to regain his blood essence. So he went and bought herbs and tonics that could help nourish his blood. He kept taking the tonics and replaying the game again and again, and finally was able to use the crack of the skeleton to smash it. He gained a speed crystal of 13 stats, but his speed stat only improved to 9, and he guessed that all his stats stopping at level 9 meant it was the limit for the mortal class. He again felt the need to use a good cultivation technique to get stronger. Then he was pondering if he should really use the technique given by that criminal. Then he remembered that Jing gave him a pendrive from his dad. So when he accessed the pendrive, he found that it recorded a skill called Sun Shooting Spell. 
The spell was mainly used for attack and was a family technique of someone from the Federation. There's no way his dad was able to get the technique with normal means. So he called his dad. But it turned out that his dad didn't know a shit about sun shooting technique. But he was curious as to why Yin Jing would give the technique to him if it was not for his dad. And as such, he didn't believe that the bitch of An Jing would give the technique to him for no reason. And again when he was sleeping he saw the same nightmare and woke up when he felt strangled. As such he had no choice but to learn the technique given by Jing Daoxian. He began comprehending the technique. Then he paused for his lunch break. But when he went back to learn the technique, he felt that he didn't remember anything about this technique that he learned previously. It turned out that if he got distracted while learning the technique completely, then he would forget what he learned previously. As such, he forgot all things and focused just on learning the technique. But still, he got distracted. So he tried to copy the text from the technique but wasn't able to do it. He tried to take an image of the text but he was not able to do it too. Just at that time, Li Xuan called him and asked if he wanted to go to the Sunset College, as Li Xuan would also be going there. Sunset College was indeed a good choice, as they discovered a new dimensional realm not long ago. But he remembered that the area of Sunset College was the turf of the An family. After a while, he heard a knock on the door, as he saw Li Xuan coming in and asking him about his choice of college. He then gave him a secret document from Sunset College, where it was shown that the new dimensional zone had creatures that were in the form of organs. He said that the companion beast that confused with the organs is very, very rare. Like if someone had his heart destroyed, then they can replace it with their organic companion beast heart. And only the people from Sunset College can enter the dimensional zone. And if the news gets released officially, then all the top students from all over the globe would rush over, but the enrollment quota is limited. As such, Zhou Wen had no choice but to accept it, as he thought that he would try his best to avoid the siblings in the meantime. So, Zhou Wen was forced to pack his bag and come with Li Xuan. Meanwhile, the Federation had found out that Zhou Wen was in the vicinity when they detected the aura of Jing Dioxian. When he was in the car with Li Xian, he felt weak and dizzy. Then he saw that the immortal enchanting technique given by the old man was vibrating in his pants. As such, he began another round of comprehension. But this time, he felt that when he was cultivating the technique, the technique vanished into his chest. Then he felt that he was able to finish the whole damn book. So he opened his game and saw his stats and confirmed it. He also discovered that the stats that was stuck at 9 had now broken through to 10. He was then brought to a mansion and was allowed to stay there by Li Xuan. After Li Xuan left, Zhou Wen practiced his battle techniques, especially his skeleton palm techniques. After he was physically tired, he took a rest and played the game. And when he was fighting the flying ant, he saw that his chi was recovering automatically. He guessed that it's the immortal enchanting technique. After practicing for a while with the silver-winged ant, his skeleton palm was upgraded to rank 10. But at that time, he was woken up by a girl who was looking for Li Xuan. So when Zhou Wen said that Li Xuan wasn't home, the girl dragged Zhou Wen out. But Zhou Wen broke out of her hand grip and asked who she was. She then said that she was the older sister of Li Xuan. Then she told him that she needed someone to help her and told him to wash up and get ready. After he did so, she took him to the arena of Sunset College. There, Zhou Wen learned that she got into a dispute with someone for the share of a beast egg, and the said culprit called for another person to fight against her for revenge. The guy was unfazed by her attacks and caught her legs and slammed her on the ground, and so Zhou Wen intervened and defended her, then he moved her away. They then decided that if Zhou Wen could make the guy take three steps back, then he would win. And sure enough, when Zhou Wen punched, the guy took way more than three steps back. But the other team's bitch didn't want to give the beast egg back even after they lost. But she had no choice but to give in. But Zhou Wen's hand was also bleeding since the other guy had a porcupine beast with sharp thorns as his symbiotic beast. Back in home, when he was about to start playing the games in peace, he saw Li Xuan barging in and telling him that he found a way to go to the dimensional realm found by Sunset College and said that they would visit the dungeon the next day. Zhou Wen then asked him for advice on hatching the legendary beast egg and found out that one needs to have at least 12 points of chi to be able to hatch a legendary beast. And if hatched without enough chi, the hatcher would die from chi depravity. Unless one practiced a very high class chi technique like Li Xuan himself. Back in his room, Zhou Wen was rubbing the egg 
and all of a sudden the egg was swallowed by the phone as it was stored in it. The stored egg showed the stats of the egg. It also showed the option to hatch and fusion. He knew what hatching was, but he didn't know what fusion was. So he tapped on it, and found out that it could fuse with his other companion beast. Curious, he confirmed his choice, and saw that his ant beast was going through physical changes, and obtained the skeleton pierce ability from the skeleton general. He never heard companion beasts fusing with each other, so to test it, he launched the game and fought with the flying ant. His companion beast was very strong, however. The flying ant had a very good evading technique. Thus, it evaded the attack of his companion beast and attacked Zhou Wen's avatar. The next day, Li Xuan introduced his new companion beast, a jade-eyed tiger. The duo planned to go to the dungeon while riding it. When they arrived, they were allowed entry. Outside of the dungeon, many people gathered, and many were selling crystals obtained from the dungeon. Li Xuan then showed him a map only known to VIPs. And following the map, they were headed to the Buddha Lotus Bond. On the way, Zhou Wen noticed the same symbol as the ancient city. So he scanned the symbol with his scanner, and sure enough, another dungeon app opened up in his phone. When they went in deeper, they saw beautiful glowing lights with lotus flowers. Although the water in the pond looked beautiful, but the water would cause a living being to turn into a skeleton as it dissolved flesh. So the only way to cross it is by flying. Li Xuan was regretting, as if he had known it earlier, he would have bought a flying symbiotic beast egg. So they looked for other areas that they can explore. But most of the areas were deemed as danger zone as a lot of soldiers died of organ failure all of a sudden in those areas. Then the duo saw that someone who was fighting in the distance was about to fall into the water, due to the sudden emergence of a monster. The guy was good with lightweight technique thus, was able to stand on a lotus leaf. But he was too far from the shore. Zhou Wen then tested his ant gloves, and found out that the water wasn't able to hurt him through the glove. So he decided that he would give it a try. He then summoned his companion beast, who was half skeleton and half ant. The skeleton ant then went and helped the other guy come to the shore while the lotus flowers were constantly shooting red beams at the skeleton warrior. The guy thanked Zhou Wen for saving him and introduced himself as Luo Xuan and said that he would remember this favor. Li Xuan and Zhou Wen both were looking at the skeleton ant and found out that it wasn't affected by the water of the lotus pond at all. So Li Xuan asked Zhou Wen to attack the lotus flower with his pet as the flower might have something precious. But Zhou Wen didn't want to risk his hard-earned skeleton ant. Besides, he can just defeat the flower in the dungeon game and might obtain the same reward. When he went back to the mansion, he entered the underground pond, and then he summoned his ant and began rounds of fighting. He got a skill crystal finally, after killing so many Buddha Lotus. He then checked the skill and found out it was called Meditation of Rank 7. He then tested the skill more but found out that it was just making him warm and not doing anything else. And just at that time, the boss of the Buddha Lotus appeared in the game as it fired blood-colored balls immediately after, and when it saw that its attack wasn't working on the ant, it tried to escape. So Zhou Wen made his ant jump towards the flower, but the flower then opened its jaws and swallowed the ant whole. Thus, Zhou Wen's avatar had no choice to leave the Buddha boss alone for a while. He then remembered that Li Xuan mentioned the danger zones where soldiers died all of a sudden without any attack. So he went over there and found no monster on his way, and just as he stepped near the danger zone, his phone showed him the game was over. He tried again and again to figure out the real reason for the sudden death, and found out that when the character entered the zone, their internal organs twisted slightly. The next day, he saw Li Xuan laughing as he said that many people rushed over to the lotus pond after hearing the news of the Buddha lotus, and one person had his legendary golden hawk's feather burned. Zhou Wen was relieved as he didn't let his skeleton ant fight the Buddha Lotus boss the last time. Zhou Wen then got a call from his father who said that since he was in Luoyang City, then he should visit his mother, and thus invited him to dinner. A while later, Zhou Wen saw An Jing at the door of their mansion. When An Jing was in the house, she said that their parents were waiting and told him to follow her. On the way to the car, she was annoyed seeing that Zhou Wen didn't practice the skill that she gave him. And at the same time, the agents from the Federation were tracking his every move. They discussed how Zhou Wen's dad married Ouyang Lan from a family, and was suspicious as Ouyang Lan would never marry an incompetent man. Soon they reached the mansion of his parents and also met his new mom. His mom then cooked him delicious food, 
but she didn't let Njing eat it and said it was punishment for bullying Zhou Wen before. His mom told him that he could stay in the mansion while studying in college, but Zhou Wen rejected it. So his stepmom gave him a card that could grant him a single-person dorm at Sunset College. Zhou Wen took it as he needed it for playing games without being disturbed by his roommates. When he went back to Li Xuan's mansion, he found out that Li Xuan again wasn't at home. So he peacefully entered the game, and this time he got another symbiotic egg. But he didn't have time to check out the egg as the flying ant again attacked him. However, this time he was able to land a blow to the fast flying ant. But it still wasn't dead. But after trying his hardest once more, he was able to defeat the ant. He also obtained another symbiotic egg from it. He was again faced with a difficult choice. But this time, the fusion success rate was only 20%. But if he failed to hatch it, then it would also be gone. And right when he confirmed his choice of hatching, the backside of his body was aching in extreme pain, which made him vomit blood. After waking up, he checked his stats in the game and was happy as he was successfully able to hatch it. Thus, with his newfound flying ability, he went to try out the Lotus Dungeon again. In the dungeon, he summoned his new beast and was surprised when the stats said that it was just a larva and was of legendary level. But the attributes were too bad for a legendary level beast. Then a warning came saying that the beast was hungry and needed to be fed. He also found out that the silver-winged beast only eats beast eggs and monsters. But he had no choice but to accept this situation. Thus, he took out the symbiotic egg that he got last time and fed it to it. Then he tried his beast wings and found out that they were very fast, even though very small. But it's only fast when flying in a low altitude. He then advanced much deeper in the dungeon and found more and more ants and discovered that the ants were too many. Not only that, he also discovered a horde of flying ants. Thus, he had no choice to stop his plans of going deeper. He needed to wait until his ant beast grows bigger at least. Zhou Wen was hungry after losing all those blood, but he found out that there was nothing in the kitchen, so he had no choice but to go out. But just at this time, the agent from the Federation appeared in front of him in a seducing dress. She pretended to trip and fell on the ground, but the heartless Zhou Wen didn't even give a dime. Thus, she was angry and followed him from behind. But Zhou Wen didn't even notice her as he was thinking about defeating the Buddha Heart Lotus. The red bitch again came and told him that she was hurt and needed someone to send her home. But Zhou Wen told her that he didn't have anything to eat at home and left. No choice. She used force and tried to knock out Zhou Wen. But how could it be easy so Zhou Wen used his ant wings to dodge the attack? She left as she didn't want to cause any more commotion and alert the An family. Zhou Wen then called Li Xuan and asked for more info about the Federals. He told Li Xuan about Jing Daoxian but didn't tell him that he was given a cultivation technique by him. Li Xuan said that the Federal would do anything to achieve its goal, and was like a group of hyenas. The red bitch was reprimanded by his superiors, and found out that the Ang family had given their legacy blessing to Zhou Wen instead of on Jing, which meant they greatly valued him. And it would be even harder to capture Zhou Wen from then on. The said person, Zhou Wen, arrived at his dorm and got in after using his keycard. The room was spacious, and everything was neat and tidy. Zhou Wen didn't bring any spare clothes, because he rushed to Luoyang, so he needed to go out and buy some. While he was thinking of where he could buy clothes in the school campus, he saw an Jing coming from upstairs. Nevertheless, he went outside and met Gu Dian, who was petting some street cats and dogs. Gu Dian was embarrassed, for Zhou Wen found out his hobby for caring for pets. So he warned Zhou Wen to not spread any word of this. After buying some clothes, he went back and replayed the game again and again, but every time he went to the small temple, his organs would twist and would die instantly. It seems like a door, and if he didn't have any keys he gets killed, but he doesn't have any idea where the key might be. Then an idea struck him. Since the temple was a Buddha temple, then what if he used the Buddha meditation art that he got from killing one of the lotus? As such, he used the meditation technique and moved ahead step by step and as he expected it worked. But he noticed that the energy usage was very high to maintain the Buddha meditation skill in the temple, so he died from exhaustion. So the next time he went there, he used his Buddha meditation skill and immediately rushed in. But he wasn't fast enough, so he used his silver wings, but was still not fast enough. But he didn't lose hope, as he could decrease the energy consumption of the meditation skill by improving his Buddha technique. So he planned to go to Buddha Pond, just at that time, 
Li Xuan called him and told him to come to the Buddha Pond. Back in the Buddha Pond, a third-year student called Yang Li proposed to kill the Buddha boss and give the loot as a gift to Anjing. But Anjing said that she didn't need these gifts and also added that Yang Lai wouldn't be able to kill the Buddha boss anyway. When Zhou Wen arrived, Li Xuan told him how his sister was being courted by Yang Li. Yang Li then again told Ang Jing that it didn't matter if she looked down on him, but after he killed the Buddha Lotus, she must accept the matriculation gift. And as such, he summoned two legendary Silver Eye Hawks who dodged the Blood Needle attack of the Lotus Buddha boss and attacked it, but their attack just scratched the skin of the Lotus. Seeing this, Yang Lai attacked it himself, but also failed to hurt the Lotus as it covered itself with blood energy. Yang Lai was depressed as he didn't expect the Lotus to have defensive skills too. But he noticed that the blood shield only defended from the sides, and the top part was exposed. So he used his legendary beast to attack it from the top. But then the Lotus opened its petals that were filled with sharp teeth and swallowed it whole. And just like that, Yang Lai lost one of his legendary beasts. Yang Li was depressed and challenged Li Xuan and the company who was mocking him. But Li Xuan accepted the challenge of defeating the Buddha Lotus. The group then used the companion beast of the blonde guy to make a raft on the river. Li Xuan took the initiative and attacked the Lotus while Zhou Went used his skeleton ant to distract it. Then Li Xuan used his ultimate attack to split the Lotus. And when the Lotus split, a toad was revealed. But the toad then attacked the falling Li Xuan as he was exhausted from using his trump card. But Zhou Wen saved him from the attack and told Mian Tu, the blonde guy, to move Li Xuan to the shore. Then Zhou Wen with his skeleton ant attacked the toad. But after he finished off the toad he saw that Mian Tu still hadn't caught Li Xuan and seemed to be betraying him again. Then Li Xuan punished Mian Tu for betraying him. But Mian Tu destroyed his own magic beast raft with the hope of drowning them. But they were saved by Ang Jing's ability. When back home, Zhou Wen asked as why his brother would go to such a length to just become the heir of the Li family. But Li Xuan then said that, it was not because his brother wanted the heir title, but because he wanted the legacy blessing that his father gave especially to Li Xuan. And only by killing Li Xuan can he obtain the legacy blessing for himself. Zhou Wen didn't know what legacy blessing was, so Li Xuan told him how the six epic rank heroes of the Federation killed a mythical beast. Generally, even 100 epic warriors shouldn't be able to kill a mythical beast. But the six epic warriors had blessings bestowed upon them which gave the mythical beast's larva as a companion. And only that way were they able to kill the mythical beast. Zhou Wen didn't know that his footage of fighting the Lotus went viral, and even the Federal learned of it. They noticed that Zhou Wen didn't use any essence skill when defeating the Toad from the Lotus, which meant that his cultivation art is very powerful and they speculated that Zhou Wen shouldn't be able to grasp such a cultivation technique in a short time, and surely shouldn't have learned it after meeting the Ang family. That meant only Jing Dao Xing could have given the technique to him. Thus the agents immediately issued an arrest warrant for Zhou Wen. But the red-haired agent asked if the An family would sit still if they go to arrest Zhou Wen. But her boss said that the Ang siblings hate Zhou Wen for taking away their legacy blessing. So they won't protect Zhou Wen at all. Meanwhile, Zhou Wen was able to defeat the Buddha Lotus boss in the game and was able to obtain an egg from it. And just at that time, a warning popped up saying that the flying ant is hungry and needed food. Thus he had no choice but to give the beast egg he had just obtained to the ant. But after eating the egg, it was still in the larva stage and didn't rank up at all. He was exhausted thinking of his future, where he might need to gather many beast eggs just to feed the flying ant. And just at this time, a knock came from the door and he met the guy from before. The guy told him that a senior was inviting him to talk with. Zhou Wen reluctantly followed the guy and met the senior classmate called Hui Hai Feng. Hui Hai Feng then praised Zhou Wen's judgmental ability when he fought the Blood Lotus. So he invited him to his team to subjugate the Blood Lotus. He also said that with Zhou Wen in the team, they would completely defeat the Blood Lotus. But Zhou Wen refused. But the guy insisted. So Zhou Wen said that he would need a legendary companion beast egg in exchange for joining the team. Surprisingly, the guy accepted his deal and immediately threw an egg at him. Zhou Wen was a bit surprised but accepted it nonetheless. Back in his room, Zhou Wen fed the egg to his companion flying ant beast. After the digestion ended, its size grew way bigger and had slight fire attribute aura. The stats of the flying ant also broke through to the legendary rank and almost reached the limit of legendary creatures. 
It also gained a long-ranged attack skill called Demon Needle. After seeing the stats, he immediately got into the dungeon and attacked the Buddha Lotus. This time it was easy for the flying ant to kill the Buddha Lotus. And after the Buddha Lotus was dead, the toad came out and shot a purple beam towards the ant, but the ant was extremely fast at such low altitude. Then the ant shot its demon needle and pierced the head of the toad. But what Zhou Wen didn't expect is that the piercing of the toad's head caused it to self-destruct. Zhou Wen worried that it would be hard to gain the loot from the Buddha Lotus, as it would drop into the poisonous water before one could obtain it. But what surprised him was that the flying ant caught the loot and escaped before the explosion spread. Zhou Wen was able to gain an energy crystal from the Buddha Lotus, and when he absorbed it, he felt very hot around his body. And when he checked his stats, he saw that his original skill heart meditation leveled up and became blood meditation. Thus with the newfound improvement in the Buddha meditation, he again ventured into the Buddha temple. This time he was able to get in the gates of the temple. There he saw a technique engraved in the rocks and was called minor perfection. Then when he was paying attention to the technique, he felt sudden pain in his head. And just at that time, the immortal sutra given by Jing Dao Xian acted and completely negated the pain caused by the engraving. He then noticed that only half of his qi is left, so he hurried and entered in the small temple. Inside he saw three-faced Buddha, and before he could get even deeper, he died. So he guessed that the key should be learning the sutra outside of the temple. Even though he was cultivating an immortal sutra, and couldn't switch to a new sutra, he still went to learn it. And when he was about to run out of qi, he got out of the temple and recovered his qi and got inside again. And just like that he learned the sutra. Immediately after he memorized all of it, it started circulating in his body automatically. But he didn't ponder much and went to sleep. When sleeping, his body emitted faint markings. And when he woke up, he noticed that he was peeling old skin like a reptile. Not only that, but he somehow accomplished an impossible task, which was cultivating two techniques without replacing another. Both his Minor Perfection Sutra and Immortal Sutra were there. And each art having two different kinds of energy should have made it impossible to coexist but somehow it was in harmony. Just at that time, he got a phone call from Hui Hai, so he quickly left for the dungeon. In the dungeon, Zhou Wen instructed the team and the team obeyed his advice, but near the end when it was time to land the killing blow to the toad, the group didn't listen to Zhou Wen's command and killed it, thus caused an explosion dragging two more legendary beasts with it. After going back home, he still fought the Buddha Lotus in the game dungeon and finally obtained the Blood Buddha Companion Beast that was of legendary rank. But this egg didn't inherit the good skills from the original Blood Buddha, so he didn't want to hatch it. But when he tried fusing it, he saw that the success rate was very low too. Thus he had no choice but to feed it to the silver-winged ant. But the silver ant didn't change even after eating it. After that, he continued his grinding and went to the temple again. This time he didn't die as soon as he saw the three-faced Buddha. This time, however, a magical circle appeared beneath him. And just as he thought that he had fallen into a trap, he saw many companion beast eggs appearing before him. He then obtained and chose a beast egg whose stats was unidentified. But he forgot that as soon as he touched the egg he would be affected by it. Then he saw on the phone that it was a mythical beast egg, but he wasn't happy at all. As the last time he chose to hatch a legendary creature, which almost killed him as a result. But this time it was a mythical creature, and he was sure that he would die this time. But surprisingly he didn't die and saw his companion beast. It looked like a dog and had 11 stats in all fields but was of mortal rank. It seems like the rank of the beast as of now was only mortal and might grow to the mythical beast in the future. Zhou Wen was relieved but was surprised that it was dubbed as a mortal creature despite having so many skills. He then fused with this new beast as it turned into earrings. And then he felt as though he could hear from far away from outside the dorm to the garden outside. He then heard Ang Jing's painful squeaks of period cramp from upstairs. So he went to check up on her. But she didn't open the door. So the fool of Zhou Wen broke in and saw Ang Jing groaning in pain. But when he asked if she needed him to call a doctor, she said that it would be fine after a while. Zhou Wen had mixed the bloodstones in a cooker, hoping they would help him recover some blood. As he thought about the potential benefits, his cell phone suddenly rang. When he answered, Li Xuan was on the other end, full of excitement. Li Xuan shared that it had been his first day of school, and the club was actively recruiting new members, 
he urged Zhou Wen to join him in checking it out. Despite focusing on making bloodstone soup for personal gains, Zhou Wen wasn't interested in joining any club. Li Xuan persisted, revealing his plans to create his own club and expressing the desire for Zhou Wen to be a part of it. However, Zhou Wen remained unmoved, convinced that he could become stronger faster through gaming. Unfazed by Zhou Wen's disinterest, Li Xuan mentioned the school's organized missions requiring teamwork, suggesting that Zhou Wen's skills were crucial. Zhou Wen countered, questioning if Li Xuan wanted a repeat of the high school incident. This caused a momentary silence, after which Li Xuan conceded. He suggested they not form a team but still explore the school together. As the sun dipped below the horizon, a sizable crowd had gathered at the Sunset School Center Plaza. Zhou Wen, observing the multitude of people, felt a sense of amazement. In the midst of the crowd, Li Xuan spotted Zhou Wen and enthusiastically waved at him, accompanied by a girl standing by his side. Intrigued, Zhou Wen made his way toward them. Li Xuan, noticing the strange bag Zhou Wen carried, inquired about its contents. Zhou Wen explained that it held his bloodstone soup, enriched with a blend of healthy ingredients. Hearing this, Li Xuan speculated that the soup might be too dense for Zhou Wen's liking. The girl standing with Li Xuan greeted Zhou Wen, prompting him to reciprocate by addressing her as senior sister. In turn, she introduced Zhou Wen and Li Xuan to three more beautiful senior sisters present. Li Xuan, playfully flirting, informed the senior sisters that Zhou Wen was already accompanying him, cautioning them against using their beauty as a method of seduction. Expressing gratitude, Zhou Wen apologized to the senior sisters, explaining that he had committed to forming a club with Li Xuan. In response, one of the senior girls expressed hope that their respective clubs could collaborate and support each other in missions if the opportunity arose. Upon hearing the senior sisters' hopeful words, Li Xuan responded with a thumbs up and an excited smile on his face. The girls bid their farewells and departed. Watching them leave, Li Xuan playfully mocked Zhou Wen suggesting that he had missed the perfect opportunity to be surrounded by numerous beauties. Unfazed, Zhou Wen urged Li Xuan to focus and take action if they intended to create a club, emphasizing the urgency to act before all the freshmen were claimed by other clubs. Below them, the freshmen were engrossed in the process of selecting their clubs. Li Xuan disclosed to Zhou Wen that creating a club as freshmen required a month of attendance at the school and a minimum of five members to apply. As such, they currently lacked the qualifications to establish a club, Perplexed, Zhou Wen questioned the purpose of their visit. Li Xuan nonchalantly replied that it was simply to enjoy the view of some pretty girls. Suddenly, Zhou Wen's former team members arrived, offering warm greetings. Li Xuan, catching sight of a striking girl among them, inquired about her identity. Zhou Wen informed him that she was Ru Shi, a fellow high school classmate. Excited by the prospect, Li Xuan approached Rao Shi and swiftly invited her to join their team. To his delight, she agreed, with the condition that they could only request to form a club after a month to which she was willing to wait. Expressing gratitude, Ru Shi turned to Zhou Wen and apologized for the incident during the entrance exam. Observing her sincere apology, Li Xuan deduced that she had enrolled at Sunset School because of Zhou Wen. Zhou Wen reassured Rao Shi, stating that he bore no ill will toward her for the circumstances. One of Zhou Wen's male team members interjected, acknowledging that they were compelled to act during the entrance exam and assuring that such incidents would not recur. Sensing a need to refocus, Li Xuan intervened, suggesting that since everyone was acquainted, they should return and prepare for their first combat lesson test. Upon learning that they were not headed to Buddha City, Zhou Wen inquired about the change of plans. Li Xuan clarified that Buddha City was a newly discovered area with numerous unknown dangers that could jeopardize the lives of freshmen. Rao Shi added that the school would choose from the four stabilized controlled dimensions for the test. According to Ru Shi, the test involved killing a dimensional creature to pass, with higher points awarded for each successful kill. Zhou Wen, puzzled, questioned how she possessed such information. She explained that she had gleaned details from the school's dimensional forum. After the discussion, Zhou Wen departed, pondering the significance of the dimensional forum Ru Shi had mentioned. It had been established by the federal authorities to encourage the sharing of information, open to everyone, including common people for submitting and retrieving valuable information. In Guaidi School, Zhou Wen had minimal interaction with the dimension area, but at Sunset School, communication flourished through the forum. As Zhou Wen reached his building, engrossed in his mobile phone, a little girl approached him. Identifying herself as Wang Lu, a special student who had recently moved into the building, she began her introduction. However, as she spoke, Zhou Wen abruptly bolted upstairs and closed his room door, leaving the girl bewildered. Inside his room, 
Joe One settled in front of his computer, scrolling through slides on the forums. It dawned on him that this platform served as a hub for school-related information and a space for diverse individuals to share disclosure information. However, what shocked Zhou Wen was the forum site's lack of requirement for real names during registration. Users could enter any pseudonym of their choosing. Moreover, the platform boasted an enticing rewarding system where individuals could utilize forum dimensional points to exchange for a variety of resources in the store. To accumulate dimensional points, Zhou Wen needed to actively contribute to the forums by posting. There existed a standard post type that could be earned through clicks, but relying solely on normal post views wouldn't yield a substantial amount of dimensional points for Zhou Wen. To accumulate more points, Zhou Wen had the option to post paid content on the forum. Interestingly, there was no limit to the amount of paid content one could post. However, given the predominantly anonymous nature of the forum, users tended to favor paid content from high-rated individuals. A particularly inexpensive strategy known as rating required as little as five-dimensional points. As Zhou Wen absorbed this information, he delved into contemplation about what he should contribute to the forums. Suddenly, inspiration struck, and he found himself brimming with ideas. In a room, Teacher Wang lounged comfortably, sipping coffee and scrolling through the forums. Intrigued by the discussions surrounding her and the freshman students, she contemplated the prospect of easily amassing points from these newcomers. As she perused through the forum, her attention was captivated by a particular post that left her utterly shocked. The post in question detailed a raid strategy for the small Buddha temple, priced at a staggering 20,000 dimensional points. Teacher Wang couldn't fathom how the individual who posted it had acquired knowledge of the small Buddha temple, especially considering the restricted nature of its surroundings. She observed that the person behind the post had just registered an account, making the exorbitant price appear suspicious. Despite the potential scam, Teacher Wang couldn't ignore the possibility that the person might genuinely know about the small Buddha temple. This realization made her think about the potential benefits, especially in reducing military search casualties. Interested, she hesitated only briefly before clicking the purchase button, revealing instructions that suggested using heart meditation from the Buddha's heart to block its power, a technique whose effectiveness increased with the practitioner's level, allowing for an extended stay in the temple. There was also a friendly reminder, cautioning against entering the interior of the Buddha temple. After reading it, Teacher Wang couldn't shake the feeling that she might have fallen for a scam, especially since the requirements for heart meditation were supposed to be free. Meanwhile, in the virtual world of the Dungeon Ancient City game, Joe Wen used his summoned flying ant to battle a menacing skeleton knight. With skillful moves, the ant emerged victorious, causing the knight to drop a mysterious companion beast egg. Undeterred by the lack of immediate results, Joe Wen fed the egg to his silver-winged flying ant, only to find that nothing remarkable happened. Watching this, Zhou Wen wondered if the skeleton knight truly held little value for his trusty companion, prompting him to consider exploring the deeper parts of the map. As he delved further into the virtual world, Zhou Wen discovered an absence of any skeleton soldiers. Undeterred, he pressed on until he reached the ancient city's fire immortal platform. Confused by the unexpected presence of this platform in the ancient city, Zhou Wen wondered about its origin. It turned out that the platform had been constructed as a star observatory by Yi Bo, a mythical Chinese emperor. However, in the history books, the Fire Immortal platform had never been inside the ancient city. The puzzling relocation of this structure to the inner part of the city left Zhou Wen contemplating the reasons behind this unusual change. Abruptly, a streak of energy soared over from the Fire Immortal platform, narrowly missing Zhou Wen and his trusty flying ant. This energetic force, known as the Silver-Winged Flash, executed a U-turn as it passed between Zhou Wen and the ant, hurtling back towards them with determination. Reacting swiftly, Zhou Wen assumed a defensive stance and launched his ash palm attack at the charging silver-winged flash. However, the attack missed its mark, and in retaliation, the flash struck Zhou Wen's character, resulting in his virtual demise. Undeterred, Zhou Wen replenished his in-game vitality by consuming the entirety of the bloodstone soup, gearing up for another round. Upon re-entering the game, Zhou Wen attempted to observe the Fire Immortal Temple from an aerial perspective, yet the relentless silver-winged flash continued its pursuit. Faced with this persistent threat, Zhou Wen devised a strategy, using himself as bait to divert the flash's attention towards the nearest enemy. With a deft maneuver, he removed the companion state from the flying ant. As the flash homed in on Zhou Wen, the flying ant seized the opportunity to strike, delivering a potent sting attack. This proved to be remarkably effective against the formidable phoenix. However, 
Zhou Wen noticed the absence of a notification signaling the Flash's demise. Choosing to overlook this anomaly, he started ascending the platform's stairs, only to be unexpectedly confronted by yet another silver-winged Flash. Zhou Wen issued a command to his flying ant, instructing it to draw the attention of the fiery onslaught towards itself. Obediently, the flying ant took to the air, becoming the prime target for the silver-winged Flash. In a swift and evasive maneuver, the flying ant managed to dodge the imminent attack, luring the Flashes away from Zhou Wen. Witnessing this diversion, Zhou Wen felt a surge of relief, confident that he could now ascend the platform undisturbed. Yet, his elation was short-lived. A formidable group of silver-fanged Flashes emerged from the platform, charging relentlessly in his direction. Despite a moment of hesitation, Zhou Wen's determination to uncover the mysteries atop the platform propelled him forward. Jumping into the midst of the charging flashes, he utilized his ash palm technique to boost himself further into the air. Suspended in mid-air, he neared the summit and caught sight of emperor engravings within the fiery display. Suddenly a flash struck him, abruptly ending his virtual journey. Pondering the significance of the term emperor, Zhou Wen wondered why the game referred to it as the ancient emperor city. As he reflected, he also realized that defeating the phoenix failed to trigger a kill notification, raising the possibility of it being some form of essence energy art summon. What proved more annoying to Zhou Wen was the contemplation of encountering the boss responsible for summoning the flashes. Pondering the potential secrets concealed within the Fire Immortal platform, he acknowledged the current impossibility of exploring its depths. Turning his attention to the forums, Zhou Wen was astonished to discover that two individuals had purchased his post. Excitement surged through him, realizing that it was an easy way to earn some money. As Zhou Wen reveled in the thought of the newfound income, a private message materialized on the forums, indicating a desire to discuss the small Buddha temple. On the receiving end, Teacher Wang anxiously awaited a response, growing concerned about the delay. Deciding not to wait any longer, Teacher Wang placed a call, informing the recipient that she had already conducted tests proving the efficacy of heart meditation against the mysterious power of the small Buddha. Expressing her confusion about the identity of a person named Drug, who seemed privy to such information, she received a reply suggesting that this information alone didn't entirely resolve the issue. The person on the other end elaborated, expressing that their real trouble lay with the steely positioned in front of the Buddha palace door. In response, Teacher Wang mentioned her awareness of other locations harboring similar enigmatic structures. The man informed Teacher Wang that those who mastered the essence energy art from the steely could unlock mysterious powers, with the text inscribed on it being the minor perfection wisdom. He mentioned that several individuals had volunteered to memorize the words but regrettably, all of them had met an untimely demise. Stunned into silence, Teacher Wang absorbed this revelation. The man directed her to find out what the mysterious person had to say about the matter. Upon rechecking her messages, Teacher Wang was surprised to find that the man had responded, inquiring about the nature of their conversation. Seizing the opportunity, she texted him, expressing her willingness to pay a substantial amount for information on cultivating the minor perfection wisdom. Meanwhile, Zhou Wen, reading Teacher Wang's inquiry, pondered the meaning behind her mention of a cultivation method. Recalling his own experience with the small Buddha Staley, he decided not to disclose the information about the immortal sutra that had aided him during that challenging moment. Choosing to keep this valuable knowledge to himself, Zhou Wen closed the chat. The following morning at school, Li Xuan encountered Zhou Wen. Observing Zhou Wen once again indulging in the bloodstone soup, Li Xuan attempted to calm him down, suggesting a break from its consumption. Zhou Wen realized the toll his activities in the ant dungeons had taken on him. Despite the newfound strength of his flying ant, he and his skeleton remained weakened unable to efficiently gather drops even from easily defeated black ants. In the classroom, a sense of awe swept through the students as a new teacher entered. Teacher Wang Fei introduced herself, but her weariness was evident, her blue eyes betraying the fatigue of waiting for a reply from the mysterious person. Li Xuan, ever the flirt, initiated his usual banter with her. Playfully responding, Teacher Wang Fei announced the upcoming entrance exam task. She informed the class that, over the next ten days, each student was required to form a team of up to four members. Their mission, to eliminate a demonic general in the tiger cage. The catch was that the combat duration was limited to a mere one and a half minutes. Furthermore, failure in the task would result in expulsion from the school. Witnessing the announcement, shock and astonishment rippled through the students. Concerned, they voiced their apprehension to Teacher Wang, questioning the difficulty of the assigned task. In response, Teacher Wang assured them that, with effort and dedication, the ten days provided would be sufficient for success. 
she revealed her plan to open the Tiger Cage Pass for the students, starting from that day and lasting for the next 10 days. Curious about the challenge, Zhou Wen turned to Li Xuan for insight, questioning why defeating the Tiger Cage was considered difficult. Li Xuan elaborated, explaining that the Tiger Cage was a remnant battlefield, causing dimensional creatures within to attain formidable strength. Moreover, the demonic general ranked higher than the average legendary creature. Given the mortal status of the students, Li Xuan deemed the task exceedingly challenging for them. After pondering for a moment, Zhou Wen suggested to Li Xuan that they should explore the Tiger Cage Pass. In the facility room, another teacher questioned Teacher Wang about why she had opened the Tiger Cage for ordinary students. In response, Teacher Wang explained that she had already shared the details of the Demonic General on the Dimensional Forum. She emphasized that with diligent research, defeating the General wouldn't be overly challenging. Moreover, she emphasized the importance of passing this test, stating that the challenges of the future war would surpass the difficulty of this particular task. On the other side, Li Xuan and Zhou Wen went through the Tiger Cage portal and entered. Standing on the arena, they looked down to see warriors resembling zombies. Watching them, Zhou Wen asked Li Xuan if these were the demonic soldiers. In response, Li Xuan suggested exploring further to encounter a demonic general. Being cautious, Zhou Wen remarked they were unfamiliar with the area, and it might be unwise to go deeper. Zhou Wen then suggested to Li Xuan that he would check the nearby surroundings. Wandering about, Zhou Wen speculated about dungeons in this location, considering both Buddhist city and ancient city had dungeons. Lost in thoughts, he stumbled upon a lion statue with a palm mark. Excitement surged within him as he realized he had discovered another dungeon. Meanwhile, Li Xuan observed two students battling demonic soldiers. Seeing the students holding their ground, he concluded that the soldiers were relatively weak. Returning from the tiger cage, Zhou Wen suggested to Li Xuan that they should head back. Agreeing, Li Xuan noticed Zhou Wen's smiling demeanor and inquired about the source of his happiness. However, Zhou Wen chose not to answer. Together, they re-entered the portal. Back in his apartment, Zhou Wen sat at his PC and found the forum post uploaded by Teacher Wang, detailing strategies for raiding. As he prepared to click on it, he noticed a reminder cautioning that the information was only applicable for normal types of demonic generals, not the special ones. Intrigued by the mention of a special demonic general, Zhou Wen decided to explore it in the game himself. Pouring some blood on the tablet, he entered the Tiger Cage Pass. Directly jumping into the arena, Zhou Wen confronted the skeleton soldiers. With a single punch, he sent them flying, realizing that despite the information indicating the strength of demonic soldiers, they were manageable due to their mortal rank. As he pondered this, two demonic soldiers leaped at him, swiftly dispatched by his flying ant's powerful sting. Venturing beyond the arena, Zhou Wen ran, while the ant systematically took down any skeletons attempting to harm him. As Zhou Wen ventured deeper into the treacherous terrain, his heart pounded with anticipation, wondering if he would encounter the elusive special demonic general. With each step, the air grew heavier, and the shadows seemed to dance with an unknown energy. Suddenly, a majestic figure emerged from the gloom, its armor gleaming like polished obsidian, its eyes burning with an infernal fire. Was this the demonic general spoken of by Teacher Wang? Zhou Wen's heart raced as he instructed his trusty flying ant to charge towards the imposing figure. The demonic general, sensing the impending attack, spurred its demon horse forward, its muscles rippling with power. As the two combatants collided, a flurry of movement ensued. The flying ant, agile and swift, dodged the general's sweeping weapon, its stinger poised to strike. The general, enraged by the ant's audacity, unleashed a fiery shockwave, its power shaking the very ground beneath their feet. With a mighty leap, the general soared through the air, its spear poised to deliver a deadly blow. Zhou Wen watched in disbelief as the general's purple energy ball distracted his flying ant, leaving it vulnerable to the general's devastating energy shockwave. The ant, sliced in half, plummeted to the ground, its life extinguished. Zhou Wen's heart sank as he realized the gravity of the situation. Before he could react, the general, still airborne, hurled its trident spear with deadly precision. The spear pierced Zhou Wen's character, its life force draining away as darkness consumed him. Observing the scene, Zhou Wen realized that the general was indeed formidable. However, a strong desire to test his own abilities against the general surged within him. The flying ant, renowned for its remarkable speed among legendary creatures, had already been bested by the demonic general. Zhou Wen inferred that the demonic general might have attained the pinnacle of legendary strength. Deciding to take another shot, Zhou Wen initiated the game once more and descended into the arena. 
Swiftly soaring above the demonic soldiers, he headed towards the location where he had previously encountered the demonic general. To his surprise, the area was now devoid of any presence. Suddenly, a powerful slash swept toward Zhou Wan, emanating from the standard demonic general. Zhou Wan skillfully evaded the attack. Reflecting on the situation, Zhou Wan noted that the spawn rate for special demonic generals appeared to be low. Unluckily, it seemed he would mostly encounter the regular ones. Having summoned the flying ant, Zhou Wan deftly navigated the battlefield, efficiently dispatching both soldiers. Despite the normal demonic general boasting legendary rank, a noticeable power gap separated them. Upon vanquishing the general, Zhou Wen received level 15 essence energy crystals as a reward. However, realization dawned upon him that his attributes had peaked, rendering the absorption of the crystal futile. Unperturbed, Zhou Wen pressed forward, encountering no formidable foes on his journey. The absence of any special generals facilitated his unhindered progression. Reaching the Tiger Cage Pass, he marveled at the simplicity of his expedition thus far. Just as he concluded this thought, a sizable arrow suddenly pierced through his character's chest, abruptly terminating his virtual existence. Quick to revive himself, Zhou Wen found himself puzzled by the sudden attack, unable to discern its origin. With a heightened sense of danger, Zhou Wen activated the silver-winged flash, hurtling toward the Tiger Cage Pass at lightning speed. To his shock, another arrow swiftly struck him down, proving that even the remarkable speed of the silver-winged flash couldn't elude this mysterious assailant. Perplexed, Zhou Wen resolved to delve into the online forums, scouring for information about the Tiger Cage Pass and any potential threats that might be lurking within its virtual realms. While scrolling through the forum, Zhou Wen found no information regarding the contents of the Tiger Cage Pass. Historical attempts by epic rank teams to enter had all ended in failure, resulting in the designation of a five-mile radius around the pass as a forbidden area for ordinary students and teachers. Concerned about the lack of details on the special demonic general, Zhou Wen realized he could only rely on his own efforts to explore and conquer this mysterious domain. Suddenly, Zhou Wen's earring began to sparkle, transforming into his adorable pet beast, Da Ting. Greeting Zhou Wen with a cute roar, Da Ting prompted Zhou Wen to acknowledge the ongoing responsibility of hunting for both him and the flying ant. Contemplating the future, Zhou Wen recognized the need to grind for companion beast eggs before tackling the new dungeon. He felt a sense of paternal responsibility for Da Ting, as his birth coincided with Zhou Wen's virtual demise, now necessitating greater efforts to provide for him. In an unexpected turn of events, as Zhou Wen playfully rubbed Da Ting's nose, the pet suddenly engulfed Zhou Wen's entire hand in its mouth, prompting a startled scream from Zhou Wen. Unbeknownst to Zhou Wen, the little girl he had met earlier overheard the commotion and concluded that she indeed had a peculiar neighbor. As Zhou Wen withdrew his hand from Da Ting's mouth, he felt a pleasant energy coursing through it, a result of his constitution attribute reaching level 11. Surprisingly, the sensation was not uncomfortable, leaving Zhou Wen intrigued and contemplating the newfound dynamics with his peculiar pet. A message appeared on Zhou Wen's screen, informing him that he had learned a new skill called Lotus Buddha Physique, rank 9. This skill was of the defensive type, and Zhou Wen immediately stood up and prepared to try it out. Zhou Wen activated the Lotus Buddha Physique, and a Lotus Shield materialized around him. The Lotus Shield began absorbing energy from Zhou Wen, and he was shocked at how quickly his energy was draining. He realized that this skill would consume a lot of essence energy, and that he wouldn't be able to use it for a long time. Zhou Wen wondered how strong the shield's defense was, so he picked up his phone and went to test the skill in the game. In the game, he was confronted by the same ordinary demonic generals and soldiers. Zhou Wen activated the Lotus Buddha physique, and the shield effectively deflected the demonic soldier's attacks. Suddenly, the ordinary demonic general unleashed his shockwave attack, which struck the shield and caused a powerful explosion. The demonic general's essence energy skill was able to break through the Lotus Buddha physique, but its power was also significantly reduced. Intrigued by the defensive capabilities of the Lotus Buddha physique, Zhou Wen decided to test its effectiveness against arrows. As he approached the tiger cage to conduct the experiment, an arrow whizzed through the air, piercing the lotus shield and striking Zhou Wen directly. The impact was fatal, and his character was instantly eliminated from the game. Meanwhile, at the headquarters of the Special Investigation Department, the order to apprehend Zhou Wen had been issued. With utmost secrecy, Officer Li Si, an FBI agent, was dispatched to Zhou Wen's school. Entering the principal's office, Li Si inquired about Zhou Wen's whereabouts, explaining that they were there to bring him in for questioning. The principal expressed his concern, wondering what crime Zhou Wen had committed to warrant the involvement of the Special Investigation Department. Li Si assured him that Zhou Wen would not be harmed, 
and that they simply needed to ask him a few questions. However, the principal remained hesitant, having heard rumors about the department's harsh interrogation methods. He feared that Zhou Wen would be subjected to undue suffering if he fell into their hands. Sensing the principal's reluctance, Li Si realized that he would not be able to persuade him to hand over Zhou Wen. The mission to capture Zhou Wen had taken an unexpected turn, and they would need to devise a new strategy. She turned to the guard beside her and instructed him to send a signal. Then, she handed an envelope to the principal, informing him that he knew what was inside. The envelope contained the capture warrant, and the principal was shocked to see that such a high-level document was being used for a mere student. Back in his room, Zhou Wen was engrossed in his game, his character deftly evading and dodging heavy blows from an opponent. As he soared through the air, Zhou Wen unleashed a sting attack towards a demonic general. This was no ordinary general, it was the formidable special demonic general. When Zhou Wen's attack reached the special demonic general, it was countered with a powerful surround shockwave. Undeterred, Zhou Wen responded with an ash palm attack from above. The special demonic general, gripping a trident in one hand, channeled a skill in the other. With a swift motion, the demonic general completed the channeling and attacked Zhou Wen with his bare hand, wielding it like a blade. This devastating slash attack instantly eliminated Zhou Wen's character. Bewildered, Zhou Wen pondered how the demonic general had managed to kill his character with a mere hand strike. The attack was unlike any of the demonic general's other abilities. Zhou Wen recalled encountering the blade word and paper word special demonic generals, and wondered if there existed a rock word special demonic general as well. He acknowledged his inability to defeat the paper word demonic general, but believed he could dodge the blade word demonic general slash with his silver winged flash. Determined to learn more about the special demonic general's attack patterns, Zhou Wen decided to engage in a 1v2 battle, fusing his skills to gain insights into their weaknesses and openings. Just as Zhou Wen was deep in thought, a knock on his door disrupted his concentration. He wondered who would be visiting him at this unexpected hour. With a cautious hand, Zhou Wen slowly opened the door to find a uniformed guard standing before him. The guard instructed Zhou Wen to accompany him to the principal's office. Despite his skepticism, Zhou Wen followed the guard's lead. Meanwhile, An Jing, standing by her window, observed Zhou Wen being escorted towards the principal's office. She couldn't shake off a sense of unease as she witnessed this unusual procession. As Zhou Wen made his way to the office, he noticed a dwindling number of people around the campus. An unsettling realization struck him as he halted his steps. The guard was leading him out of school grounds, not towards the principal's office. Suddenly, Special Agent Li Si emerged from the shadows, her expression cold and determined. Without a word, she launched a powerful punch to Zhou Wen's stomach, the force of the blow causing him to spit blood and collapse to the ground. Coughing and gasping for air, Zhou Wen found himself on the ground, staring up at Li Si's imposing figure. She declared with a threatening tone that she would extract information about Jing Dao from Zhou Wen, bit by bit. Despite his weakened state, Zhou Wen managed to gather himself and retorted that he had no knowledge of any Jing Dao, and they lacked evidence to implicate him. Li Si was surprised by Zhou Wen's resilience, having never encountered someone who could withstand such a forceful blow and remain standing. Unfazed, she ordered her guards to apprehend Zhou Wen, their intentions clear. Zhou Wen, eyes filled with defiance, raised his head prepared to fight against this unjust treatment. Seeing Zhou Wen's attempt to resist, Li Si quickly drew her blade, ready to engage in combat. The guard, however, moved to restrain Zhou Wen, grabbing his neck. But just as the guard's fingers were about to make contact, Zhou Wen vanished, leaving the guard bewildered about his whereabouts. Li Si, with her keen perception, understood that Zhou Wen hadn't truly disappeared, but had used his flying ability to escape. She instructed her guard to pursue Zhou Wen, his footsteps audible in the distance. As Zhou Wen desperately fled, he recognized Li Si's unwavering determination to capture him. She believed him to be Jing Dao's accomplice and seemed unwilling to listen to any explanations. The immortal sutra, entrusted to him by Jing Dao, posed a significant threat, potentially leading to his conviction for associating with Jing Dao. In the midst of his frantic escape through the forest, a purple energy shard attack emerged from the bushes, narrowly missing Zhou Wen as he dodged backward. Another spirit hand attack materialized from the ground, sending Zhou Wen soaring through the air. Recovering quickly, he dodged the attack and retaliated. Determined to evade capture, Zhou Wen discarded his torn shirt and continued his sprint. The pursuit intensified as he realized that both Lady Agent Li Si and her guard possessed legendary rank, making it increasingly challenging to outrun them. The shard energy attack came from Li Si, while the spirit hand attack was launched by the guard. Suddenly, a notification popped up on Zhou Wen's phone revealing a map with a marked location labeled Underground Buddha City. 
With renewed hope, Zhou Wen theorized that this hidden city could provide the perfect sanctuary to evade his pursuers. Boldened by this prospect, he ventured into the depths of the dungeon, leaving behind a trail of dust. Lady Agent Li Si and her relentless guard remained hot on Zhou Wen's heels, their determination unwavering. Delving deeper into the labyrinthine dungeon, the guard expressed concern about the escalating situation, warning Li Si of potential repercussions from the An family. Unperturbed, Li Si unleashed a volley of energy shards towards Zhou Wen, aiming to disable his escape. With remarkable agility, Zhou Wen evaded the deadly projectiles, executing acrobatic maneuvers. Recognizing the futility of chasing Zhou Wen on foot, he summoned his ant wings, granting him the ability to soar through the air. Zhou Wen ascended to higher levels of the dungeon, leaving Li Si and her guard struggling to keep up. Lady Agent Li Si acknowledged Zhou Wen's wings as a powerful ability, but she also noted that his essence energy levels were depleting rapidly, suggesting he couldn't sustain flight for long. As Zhou Wen dodged and evaded their attacks, his exhaustion became evident. Just when it seemed his escape route was cut off, he spotted a sign indicating a restricted area. With a surge of determination, he leaped over the barrier and ventured into the forbidden zone. Undeterred by Zhou Wen's daring move, Lady Agent Li Si unleashed another volley of energy shards, aiming to disable him before he could disappear further into the restricted area. Zhou Wen, despite his fatigue, managed to evade the deadly projectiles with a series of acrobatic maneuvers. The restricted area sign served as a deterrent for Lady Agent Li Si and her guard. They hesitated, unsure whether to pursue Zhou Wen into the unknown territory. Lady Agent Li Si, however, couldn't ignore the possibility of Zhou Wen reaching the An family. If they were alerted to their pursuit, the consequences could be dire. Overcoming their apprehension, Lady Agent Li Si and her guard followed Zhou Wen's trail into the restricted area. There, they found him slumped on the ground, his energy depleted. His wings had vanished, leaving him vulnerable and exhausted. Observing Zhou Wen's weakened state, Lady Agent Li Si couldn't resist taunting him, reveling in his predicament. Zhou Wen, however, remained defiant, warning her that entering the restricted area could have dire consequences. The guard, enraged by Zhou Wen's insolence, charged towards him, intent on delivering a severe beating. But before he could reach Zhou Wen, something unexpected occurred. Zhou Wen swiftly formed a gun with his fingers and made a shooting gesture. A sudden energy blast struck the guard, sending him crashing face first to the ground. Lady Agent Li Si, witnessing this shocking turn of events, was filled with disbelief and fear. She cautiously approached the guard's lifeless body, demanding to know what Zhou Wen had done. Zhou Wen calmly replied that he had warned them about the dangers of entering the restricted area. He further stated that if Lady Agent Li Si wished to experience the same fate, she was free to do so. Intrigued by Zhou Wen's mysterious ability and his knowledge of the restricted area, Lady Agent Li Si underwent a sudden transformation. A luminous cross materialized on her forehead, and an imposing spirit angel appeared behind her. With a newfound understanding, Lady Agent Li Si declared that she now comprehended Zhou Wen's motives for venturing into this peculiar region. The restricted area, she realized, held secrets far beyond their comprehension. Zhou Wen's eyes widened in awe as the majestic spirit angel materialized behind Lady Agent Li Si, its ethereal presence radiating power and grace. However, he quickly realized that this awe-inspiring creature now posed a formidable threat to him. Zhou Wen recognized the angel as the fabled Valhalla Angel a legendary figure revered for its unwavering loyalty and formidable abilities. Legend had it that the angel was once a devout nun who, upon ascending to immortality, tragically lost her physical form. In the Federation, ranking systems were heavily influenced by the presence of dimensional creatures, powerful beings that could form symbiotic bonds with humans. Lady Agent Li Si's Valhalla Angel was particularly renowned in the western region of the Federation, its achievements widely celebrated. While the Valhalla Angel may not possess the raw, destructive power of other dimensional creatures, it held a unique and invaluable skill known as Broken Body. This extraordinary ability granted the user immunity to all forms of curses and evil influences, making it an exceptional guardian companion beast. Lady Agent Li Si, her aura enhanced by the Valhalla Angel's presence, brandished her swords, their edges glowing with a potent energy. She issued a stern ultimatum to Zhou Wen, demanding his surrender and warning of the consequences of resistance. As Lady Agent Li Si prepared to unleash her wrath upon Zhou Wen, his mind raced with questions about the origin of her powerful companion beast. He couldn't fathom how she had managed to acquire such a formidable ally. With Lady Agent Li Si charging towards him, Zhou Wen swiftly employed his clinch technique. In a sudden burst of energy, spikes erupted from the ground, ensnaring Lady Agent Li Si within their spiky embrace. Zhou Wen summoned his ant beast, hoping that it could hold off Lady Agent Li Si as he ventured deeper into the Buddha Palace. If even the three-faced Buddha couldn't subdue Lady Agent Li Si, Zhou Wen knew he was outmatched and would have to surrender. 
Suddenly the spear trap burst open and Lady Agent Lee Si emerged, her eyes blazing with determination. She demanded, Where do you think you're going? Her voice echoed through the halls as she unleashed a series of powerful shockwaves, one of which narrowly missed Zhou Wen. Her aura amplified, radiating the full might of her legendary peak rank. Zhou Wen, despite his injuries, fought back with unwavering determination. The battle raged within the Buddha Palace, their movements leaving a trail of destruction in their wake. Exhausted and battered, Zhou Wen collapsed onto the cold stone floor. Lady Agent Li Si stood over him, her swords poised, her expression a mix of triumph and ruthlessness. Ignoring Zhou Wen's plea, Lady Agent Li Si stepped into the room housing the Buddha statue. As her foot crossed the threshold, the cross on her forehead shattered, its light fading into nothingness. The Buddha statue's eyes glowed with otherworldly intensity, and a blinding beam of energy shot forth, striking Lady Agent Li Si with unyielding force. She cried out in agony, her body crumpling to the ground, blood seeping from her wounds. Zhou Wen, despite his injuries, couldn't help but raise his thumb in a gesture of gratitude towards the Buddha statue. He summoned his flying ant, its menacing form casting a shadow over the wounded Lady Agent Li Si. With a surge of adrenaline, Zhou Wen commanded his flying ant to unleash its demon bright needle attack. The flying ant soared through the air, its stinger poised to deliver the fatal blow. Lady Agent Li Sai, however, was not without her own resources. She summoned her Tempest Lion, a majestic creature of wind and lightning. The Tempest Lion leaped into action, dodging the flying ant's attack with incredible agility, allowing Lady Agent Li Si to make a narrow escape. Zhou Wen watched in disbelief as Lady Agent Li Si fled the Buddha Palace, his body aching with pain, particularly the deep gash on his chest. He knew he had pushed himself to the limit, and now it was time to rest and recover. Lady Agent Li Si staggered back to the city, her body battered and bruised. She had never faced such a formidable opponent, and the encounter had left her shaken. Yet, amidst the pain and humiliation, a flicker of determination remained. She would not rest until Zhou Wen was brought to justice. Walking in pain, she pondered revenge against Zhou Wen and schemed to frame him for the murder of the Federation officer, even anticipating the arrival of the An family. Unexpectedly, someone pressed a gun against Li Si's forehead, and Tian Zuo. Confused by his presence, Li Si wondered why he confronted her. And Tian Zuo questioned Li Si's audacity in pursuing a student for harm at Sunset Academy, and demanded to know who authorized such actions. Fearful, Li Si claimed she was following orders from the House of Representatives, even though it wasn't them. An accompanying warden advised Li Si to stick to answering the question without embellishing. Despite her heightened fear, Li Si confessed that the target was connected to Jing Daoxian. Suddenly, An Tian Zuo shot Li Si in the leg. After being shot, Li Si writhed in extreme pain blood splattering from her wounded leg. The warden's companion, fueled by anger, fired another bullet into her other leg. With two bullets in her, Li Si collapsed to the ground, trembling. And Tian Zuo, consumed by rage, shouted at the fallen Li Si, frustrated by her apparent failure to comprehend their questions. In a maniacal fit, the enraged warden's companion seized Li Si by the neck, warning her that if she didn't reveal what they wanted to know, the next bullet would find its way into her mouth. And Tian Zuo contemplated the situation his mind calculating the most efficient course of action. He suggested a swift end to Lady Agent Li Si's life, allowing her superiors to claim her body and retrieve any information they desired. The idea of execution sent shivers down Lady Agent Li Si's spine, and she desperately pleaded for her life, revealing that Chao Si Wen had authorized her actions. Without hesitation, and Tian Zuo contacted Chao Si Wen, informing him of their location and the impending execution of Lady Agent Li Si. He granted Chao Si Yuan a five-minute window to intervene if he wished to prevent her demise. Chao Si Yuan, recognizing the gravity of the situation, immediately sprang into action, utilizing his flying abilities to reach the alleyway with utmost haste. As time ticked away, An Tian Zuo kept a watchful eye on the clock, ready to carry out the execution if Chao Si Yuan failed to appear within the allotted time frame. As An Tian Zuo's finger hovered over the trigger, Chao Si Yuan descended upon the scene, marked by a gust of wind. He ordered the group to stop his authoritative presence compelling compliance. In the face of Chao Si Wen's intervention, An Tian Zuo reluctantly lowered his weapon, foiling his plan to execute Lady Agent Li Si. Witnessing Lady Agent Li Si in distress, Chao Si Wen couldn't help but question her reckless actions that had provoked the formidable An Tian Zuo. He stepped forward, pleading with An Tian Zuo to reconsider, emphasizing Lady Agent Li Si's status as the daughter of a representative, whose misguided jealousy had led to her actions. Intrigued by Chao Si Wen's revelation, an Tian Zuo inquired about the identity of this representative. Chao Si Wen explained that the Federation closely monitored Jing Daoxian's activities, and Zhou Wen was their only tangible lead. 
He further stated that An Tianzuo's past criticism of Zhou Wen indicated recognition of Zhou Wen's potential troublemaking. And Tianzuo, however, remained unmoved, asserting that mere suspicion and unproven allegations were not grounds for such drastic action. He reprimanded Chao Si Wen and his companions for their reckless behavior, emphasizing that even a dog could perform such acts of accusation. Chao Si Yuan conceded that they had indeed overstepped their boundaries. And Tianzuo, acknowledging Chao Si Yuan's sincerity, reluctantly agreed to let him take Lady Agent Li Si away. However, the warden's companion, with a menacing glint in his eye, declared that Lady Agent Li Si would only be released after her cultivation was crippled as punishment for her transgressions. Chao Si Yuan expressed concern over Lady Agent Li Si's lineage, as she hailed from the renowned Cape family. And Tianzuo, undeterred, retorted that he was known as Tianzuo precisely because he challenged the status quo and defied authority. He was not swayed by societal norms or family affiliations. On the other side, Zhou Wen sat in the small Buddha temple, his gaze fixed on his phone's lock screen, waiting for any sign of activity. As minutes turned into hours, a sense of unease settled over him. The absence of notifications was unsettling, leaving him to wonder if Lady Agent Li Si had gathered reinforcements and was plotting his capture once again. After nearly half an hour of anxious waiting, Zhou Wen realized that remaining idle was not a viable strategy. He had to take action and assess the situation for himself. With newfound determination, he carefully retrieved his damaged vigor skeleton ant, its once sturdy form now bearing the marks of their recent battle. Gathering his resolve, Zhou Wen ascended the lift, his mind racing with thoughts of his next move. As he stepped out onto the higher level, a figure emerged from the shadows greeting him. Master Wen! The man addressed him, his voice filled with deference. Zhou Wen was taken aback by this unexpected encounter. He had never encountered this man before, and the title of Master seemed strangely out of place. He inquired about the person. His curiosity piqued. The man informed Zhou Wen that Ouyang Lan had sent him to pick him up. Upon hearing the mention of the warden, Zhou Wen realized that this man had been dispatched by An Tianzuo. An Tianzuo himself arrived in a car, and Zhou Wen could not conceal his displeasure at being summoned in this manner. And Tianzuo, sensing Zhou Wen's animosity, acknowledged that Zhou Wen likely harbored resentment towards him for the incident that nearly jeopardized his entrance exam. And Tianzuo bluntly stated that he was indifferent to Zhou Wen's opinion of him, but he insisted that Zhou Wen should recognize that he would never concede to the notion of Zhou Wen replacing Jing Er. Zhou Wen, taken aback by An Tianzuo's remark, demanded clarification about what he meant by replacing. And Tianzuo, after a brief pause, decided to refrain from elaborating further leaving Zhou Wen in a state of confusion and agitation. The car reached its destination, and Zhou Wen was greeted by Sister Lan and Ling Feng. Ling Feng, noticing Zhou Wen's battered and bruised state, inquired about the source of his injuries. Ouyang Lan, upon seeing Zhou Wen's wounds, directed a questioning gaze towards An Tianzuo, who curtly replied that he had already dealt with the perpetrators. In a cozy room, Ling Feng gently tended to Zhou Wen's chest wound, skillfully applying bandages. Ling Feng, with a caring demeanor, asked Zhou Wen if similar incidents occurred in his youth. Zhou Wen affectionately referred to Ling Feng as dad, and humorously recounted how it was actually his father who used to get into trouble for flirting with the pretty neighbors. Curious about Tian Zhu's mention of Zhou Wen snatching a king's qualification, Zhou Wen sought clarification. Just as Ling Feng was about to respond, Sister Lan entered the room accompanied by a maid, announcing that it was a qualification for blessing. The maid handed Zhou Wen a shirt to wear prompting him to inquire why he was bestowed with such a blessing. Taking the shirt, Zhou Wen turned to his sister, seeking an explanation for the unexpected honor. Lan noticed that Xiao Wen didn't seem surprised by the news of the blessing. It appeared that Li family's young master had already informed Zhou Wen about it. Realizing this, Zhou Wen became aware that Jing had been deprived of a significant opportunity. Sister Lan explained that An Jing had been dealing with the cold syndrome since childhood, and even though Lan knew she was strong enough to participate, she didn't want her sister to risk herself any further. Zhou Wen then questioned why Lan didn't choose An Tianzuo instead. She responded that Tianzuo was already strong enough and didn't require it. Her father also believed that Zhou Wen was more suitable than Jing Er. Inquisitive, Zhou Wen asked if Sister Lan's father had said that. Ling Feng confirmed that it was indeed Xian Lan's father, someone Zhou Wen had encountered in high school. Ling Feng handed Zhou Wen a picture, revealing that it was the old principal. Zhou Wen was shocked by the revelation. During his third year of high school, Zhou Wen's father left abruptly. He had always been a dedicated man, training even on weekends and often meeting with his old principal during those times. The principal had taken a special liking to Zhou Wen and always enjoyed spending time with him. 
Unfortunately, the principal had to retire due to declining health, and Zhou Wen never saw him again. Zhou Wen had never suspected that his friend Lan was the principal's daughter. Lan reassured Zhou Wen that he didn't need to feel pressured to accept the position and could take his time to consider it. She also understood if he chose to decline the offer. After their conversation, the driver dropped Zhou Wen off and assured him that those who had threatened him would not dare to cause any more trouble. As Zhou Wen walked away, his phone rang. It was Li Xuan, who informed him that there had been a fight at school and that the An family had intervened on Zhou Wen's behalf. Zhou Wen initially doubted the information, but Li Xuan insisted that it was true, explaining that as a club leader, he had to keep track of his club members' well-being. Li Xuan informed Zhou Wen that they would meet the next day to complete the opening test, and Zhou Wen agreed. As Zhou Wen was about to hang up the phone, he asked Li Xuan where he was currently located. Li Xuan replied that he was at the Tiger Cage Pass, surrounded by the bodies of demonic soldiers and generals, with a dark aura emanating from him. Enraged and seeking an outlet for his anger, Zhou Wen cracked his knuckles and leaped towards Li Xuan. Upon landing, he effortlessly sent demonic soldiers flying. Witnessing this display of power, Li Xuan commented that Zhou Wen could be quite frightening at times. Zhou Wen questioned why they hadn't encountered any demonic generals yet, despite having ventured so far. Li Xuan echoed the sentiment, admitting that he hadn't encountered any demonic generals either since entering the pass. Both men found it strange that they hadn't yet crossed paths with a demonic general. Suddenly they heard the panicked shouts of students approaching from the distance. A group of students emerged, running in terror. They cried out that a strange word engraved demonic general was pursuing them. Zhou Wen and Li Xuan were taken aback by the mention of this unusual demonic general. Li Xuan proposed that they investigate this general further. Just then, a female student rushed towards Li Xuan, pleading for his assistance in rescuing her friend Wei Yan, who had not emerged from the area while attempting to help some juniors stall for time. Li Xuan was stunned and alarmed. Without hesitation, he dashed off to save Wei Yan, ignoring Zhou Wen's calls. Zhou Wen remained at the spot, his curiosity piqued by the mysterious general. Standing there, An Jing gazed at Zhou Wen and asked if he wasn't going to help his friend. Zhou Wen responded, noting that it seemed like An Jing also wanted to give it a try. He then questioned whether it was An Jing who had ordered Sister Lan to send An Tian Zuo to rescue him. An Jing, evading the question, began running, stating she didn't know what he was talking about. Undeterred, Zhou Wen started chasing after her. Meanwhile, on the opposite side of the battlefield, Wei Yan found herself locked in a fierce struggle against the powerful special demonic general. His relentless attacks, swift and forceful, overwhelmed her defenses. The demonic general unleashed a devastating attack, its force reverberating through the ground and reaching Wei Yan. Just as the impact threatened to consume her, Li Xuan materialized before her, shielding her from the impending blow. Li Xuan's intervention came at a significant cost. The sheer force of the demonic general's attack nearly shattered Li Xuan's internal organs, showing the formidable power of his adversary. Recognizing the demonic general's immense strength, Li Xuan devised a strategy to stall his opponent. He swiftly retreated, summoning his tiger spirit, a majestic creature that emerged behind him, ready to confront the fearsome beast. As the tiger spirit valiantly attempted to hold off the demonic beast, Li Xuan seized Wei Yan's hand, and they swiftly made their escape. Despite their legendary status, the tiger spirit proved no match for the demonic general's formidable power. With a single decisive strike, the demonic general sliced the tiger spirit in half, its majestic form collapsing to the ground. Witnessing the demise of his beloved spirit beast, Li Xuan's heart filled with a surge of sorrow. Meanwhile, Zhou Wen and An Jing arrived at the scene, their eyes widening as they beheld the sword word Demonic General. Recognizing the formidable challenge before them, Zhou Wen proposed a partnership with An Jing, suggesting that they could combine their forces to defeat the mighty adversary. An Jing, taken aback by his proposition, couldn't help but feel a twinge of surprise. As Li Xuan continued his desperate flight, the sword word demonic general closed in, its sword poised to unleash a devastating blow from behind. With a cry of alarm, Wei Yan warned Li Xuan that the demonic general was closing in from behind. Li Xuan, reacting swiftly, pushed Wei Yan aside, just as the demonic general lunged forward. A deafening explosion erupted as the demonic general's attack struck the ground where Li Xuan had been standing moments before. Wei Yan, her heart pounding with fear, anxiously checked on Li Xuan, relieved to see him unharmed. As the dust settled, a brilliant red light emerged, casting an ethereal glow over the battlefield. From within this radiant sphere, Zhou Wen and Li Xuan emerged triumphant, perched atop Zhou Wen's trusty flying ant. Li Xuan, overwhelmed with gratitude, expressed his heartfelt thanks to Zhou Wen for his repeated acts of bravery. 
Zhou Wen, ever the humble hero, dismissed Li Xuan's praise and cautioned him against claiming the demonic general's drops. Li Xuan, puzzled by this advice, inquired about their chances of defeating the formidable foe. Zhou Wen, with a sly smirk, countered that there were actually three of them, alluding to the presence of an unseen ally. As if on cue, a powerful laser beam streaked across the sky, striking the demonic general with pinpoint accuracy. The source of this devastating attack was none other than An Jing, who had positioned herself atop a distant cliff, utilizing her formidable afterglow skill to unleash a barrage of projectiles upon the unsuspecting demonic general. Witnessing An Jing's unexpected intervention, Li Xuan was left astounded, pondering how Zhou Wen had managed to secure her assistance. Despite her inherent cold constitution, An Jing had mastered the formidable sun strafe art, enabling her to harness the sun's power and unleash devastating attacks like the one currently raining down upon the demonic general. Infuriated by An Jing's assault, the demonic general retaliated by forming a protective lotus around himself, channeling its restorative power to heal his wounds. Recognizing the urgency of the situation, Zhou Wen urged Li Xuan to press the attack, preventing the demonic general from fully recuperating. Li Xuan, clad in his enigmatic armor, unleashed a barrage of attacks alongside Zhou Wen's formidable Bigor Divine Fist and his summoned creature's Demon Bright Needle technique. The combined assault struck the demonic general with devastating force, leaving him severely injured and spewing blood from his mouth. However, in a desperate attempt to escape, the demonic general conjured a powerful vortex of energy, engulfing himself within its swirling depths. The sheer force of the tornado sent Zhou Wen and Li Xuan flying through the air. Li Xuan, his senses heightened, realized the demonic general's intention to flee towards An Jing's location. Zhou Wen, with his eyes closed, focused his energy on detecting the demonic general's movements. His keen perception revealed that the adversary was indeed headed directly towards An Jing, moving at an alarming speed. Sensing the demonic general's ominous approach towards An Jing, Zhou Wen swiftly transformed into his silver-winged flying ant companion beast form and soared through the air, reaching An Jing's side just in time to protect her from the impending attack. Despite the precarious situation, An Jing, ever the confident warrior, maintained her composure, declaring that she could have easily evaded the attack on her own if Zhou Wen hadn't intervened. After safely transporting An Jing to a secure location, Zhou Wen turned his attention back to the demonic general his eyes blazing with determination. With his trademark agility and speed, Zhou Wen maneuvered behind the unsuspecting demonic general, unleashing a powerful ash palm attack. The impact of the attack was so immense that shockwaves erupted from the demonic general's eyes and mouth, accompanied by a deafening blast. Zhou Wen's formidable technique appeared to have struck a fatal blow, leaving the demonic general on the verge of destruction. As the dust settled from the recent attack, Zhou Wen stood in the aftermath grasping the essence energy skill crystal he had acquired by defeating the demonic general. Turning to An Jing, he extended the crystal towards her. Puzzled, An Jing hesitated and questioned Zhou Wen about its value. Zhou Wen, true to his earlier promise, asserted that he wouldn't demand her assistance without compensation and insisted that the crystal was now hers. Despite his assurance, An Jing, recalling Zhou Wen's earlier act of saving her, stepped back. She expressed her reluctance to accept the crystal stating that she didn't wish to owe him a favor. With that, she walked away, cautioning Zhou Wen against presuming any familial relationship based on this gesture. Observing the exchange from below, Wei captured the scene between An Jing and Zhou Wen. He mused to himself about the abundance of monsters in this general's vicinity. Nearby, Li San overheard and chuckled, remarking that he had grown accustomed to such occurrences. Back at his residence, Zhou Wen found himself immersed in meditation, Holding the essence energy crystal he had obtained from the mutated demonic general, he harnessed its power to absorb the essence of the formidable foe. To his surprise, he swiftly mastered the acquired skills. Eager to test his newfound abilities, Zhou Wen logged into the game and deployed the demonic general skills. The potency and fierceness of these skills became evident as he effortlessly cleaved ordinary demonic generals in half with a single slash. Intrigued, Zhou Wen delved into the details of his new skill. The Star Sword Qun slash Essence Energy, obtained from the Demonic General. The skill's description revealed that its power was contingent on the amount of essence energy the user infused. Realizing the incredible potential of this skill, Zhou Wen noted its capability to instantly vanquish formidable adversaries like Yu Tsuyu's legendary Jedi White Tiger. However, a sense of caution enveloped him as he recognized the need for judicious use. Despite the immense power unleashed when all essence energy was infused, Zhou Wen acknowledged the inherent risk during the period of energy expenditure, prompting him to approach its utilization with careful consideration. Upon re-entering the game, Zhou Wen encountered a special demonic general, 
distinct from the ones he had faced before. Eager to test the efficacy of his new star sword Qiong Slash, he directed the skill at the special demonic general. To his astonishment, the general effortlessly blocked the attack, its skin remaining unscathed even as the spell depleted Zhou Wen's entire essence energy bar. With his character seated and in the process of restoring essence energy, Zhou Wen found himself defenseless against a trident attack from the special demonic general. The assault proved overwhelming, leading to his character's defeat. It dawned on Zhou Wen that the sword word demonic general's essence energy skill was ineffective against the fist word. Reflecting on the situation, Zhou Wen recognized a pattern reminiscent of rock-paper-scissors dynamics among the three demonic generals, each possessing unique abilities. While his sword essence energy seemed to counter the paper-like demonic general, its appearance was infrequent. Determined to enhance his skills, Zhou Wen resolved to explore and grind in other dungeons. Meanwhile, back at school, students buzzed with excitement, discussing a viral video featuring Zhou Wen's intense gaming battle, captured and shared by Wei Yan. The online forum buzzed with posts recounting Zhou Wen's recent battles, capturing the attention of many. In the midst of these discussions, the young girl from the apartment building overheard her fellow students talking about Zhou Wen. According to the grapevine, Zhou Wen, despite being a mere mortal, had joined forces with An Jing to defeat a special legendary peak engraved word demonic general. The little girl couldn't help but marvel at the strength of her neighbor upstairs. In the faculty room, Teacher Wang sat with her laptop, engrossed in watching Zhou Wen's fighting videos. A fellow teacher noticed her seemingly subdued demeanor despite the remarkable achievement of her student. Puzzled, the teacher inquired why Teacher Wang didn't appear thrilled about Zhou Wen's success. Teacher Wang responded, acknowledging Zhou Wen's undeniable talent, but expressing concern over his lack of attendance at the school's self-study classes. She noted that these days, Zhou Wen seemed more engrossed in playing games, never letting go of his phone. Teacher Wang, determined not to let her student waste any more time, announced her intention to submit the Lao Junshan teaching plan. The revelation left her colleagues in the faculty room astonished. Elaborating further, she explained that the plan involved harnessing the strength of Lao Junshan's mysterious wordless steely. In her view, engaging in this plan would divert Zhou Wen's attention from his gaming addiction. While discussions unfolded about strategies for Zhou Wen's improvement, he remained blissfully unaware, lounging in his room and engrossed in gaming, occasionally scratching his backside. Eventually, wearied by the gaming session, Zhou Wen succumbed to tiredness and retired to bed. As he slept, a peculiar sensation overcame him. He felt a powerful energy emanating from his chest, and within his slumber, he found himself surrounded by a tunnel-like space with cryptic words inscribed along its walls. At the tunnel's end, a brilliant blue light beckoned. Startled, Zhou Wen opened his eyes to find himself not in his room, but on the edge of a cliff outside the city. Surveying the scene below, shock set in as Zhou Wen witnessed the once-thriving city now reduced to smoldering ruins. Bizarre and grotesque monsters wreaked havoc, with military personnel desperately trying to fend them off. The destruction unfolding before him left Zhou Wen in awe and disbelief. Amidst the chaos and destruction below, lizard-like beasts feasted on soldiers, creating a nightmarish scene that left Zhou Wen bewildered and disbelieving. The once thriving city had transformed into a realm of pure disaster. As Zhou Wen observed the grim tableau, a spirit materialized behind him. Turning to face the apparition, he was met with a smiling spirit lady. However, before he could comprehend the significance of her presence, Zhou Wen abruptly woke up. Drenched in sweat, gasping for breath, Zhou Wen realized it had all been a vivid and distressing dream. The nightmarish images lingered, the smell of burnt bodies still fresh in his mind. Puzzled by the mysterious spirit lady in his dream, Zhou Wen speculated on the potential influence of the Immortal Sutra, a power acquired from the Demon King. Alternatively, he considered the notion that his dreams might be conveying a message. Lost in contemplation, Zhou Wen was interrupted by the adorable roar of Da Ting, his loyal companion. Questioning the creature if it was hungry and had ventured out on its own, Zhou Wen dismissed the thought, opting to push aside the unsettling visions and focus on the imperative of strengthening himself before any impending disaster. Returning to his game, Zhou Wen diligently sought a path to achieve legendary rank. In the East Sea area of the Dimensional Defense Line, a warning blared, signaling the detection of a dimensional creature that had breached the defenses. This creature, known as the Dimensional Sea King Snake, had successfully passed through the defense line. Meanwhile, in the Chess Mountain area of the Dimensional Defense Line, a peculiar sight unfolded. A headless lady, her detached head cradled in her hand, surveyed the surroundings with an eerie calmness. Back at the school, a gathering of successful students convened. Teacher Wang extended her congratulations to the group before making a significant announcement. With the preliminary celebrations concluded, 
she declared the commencement of official lessons for the students who had successfully passed. On this particular day, Teacher Wang proposed taking the students, including Zhou Wen and Li Xuan, to Laojun Mountain for meditation and cultivation. Observing Zhou Wen's fatigued expression, Li Xuan couldn't resist a mocking remark. Zhou Wen, stifling a yawn, candidly shared that he had been attempting to explore advanced methods in recent days, only to find himself unable to break through the mortal stage. Despite absorbing attribute essence crystals, he found no increase in his attributes. Zhou Wen disclosed that his current hope lay in the Mere Perfection Wisdom Sutra, which he believed could assist him in breaking through to attribute level 11. Expressing his determination, Zhou Wen declared his intention to practice more diligently. He recognized the limitations of relying solely on the flying ant, and sought to acquire a light body or fly-type essence energy art. As he spoke, Zhou Wen unwittingly entered a state of slumber while still standing. Teacher Wang, observing his napping form, couldn't help but feel a surge of anger. However, a subtle smirk crossed her face, anticipating that Zhou Wen's penchant for laziness would soon be eradicated through the upcoming training. Upon Chess Mountain, a scene of utter chaos unfolded, marked by destruction and pandemonium. The once pristine surroundings now lay in ruins, a testament to a fierce and powerful adversary. Amidst the havoc, a figure exuding a formidable energy stormed in a fit of rage, the architect of the widespread devastation. Amidst the destruction, an unwarden companion valiantly defended against the raging figure. With determination, the companion charged towards the monstrous entity, seizing hold of the energy strings emanating from it. In a desperate struggle, the warden grabbed and pulled on the strings, revealing the grotesque one-eyed head of the ferocious figure. As the tug of war intensified between the warden and the monstrous entity, a sudden intervention occurred. A laser beam sliced through the air, penetrating the head of the figure, causing it to detach from its body. Emerging from the shadows was Antian Zhu, the unexpected savior in this tumultuous scene. Antian Zhu and his companion began searching for injured soldiers amidst the aftermath of chaos on Chess Mountain. However, their hopes of finding survivors dwindled as they discovered only lifeless bodies strewn across the battleground. It was evident they had arrived too late to make a difference. On the other side, Zhou Wen engaged in meditation, finding that the peculiar sensation he had experienced had dissipated. It struck him that this situation resembled the incident at the small Buddha temple from some time ago. Nearby, all the students who had successfully passed were meditating beside a monolith. The monolith emitted a vibrant glow, enveloped in a powerful green aura. The intensity of the aura made it challenging for the students to focus on their meditation in its vicinity. As the students exerted themselves in meditation, the overwhelming green aura surrounding the monolith tested their resilience. Observing their struggles, Teacher Wang reassured them, emphasizing the calming effect of the stele, which could pacify their inner selves. However, she warned that prolonged exposure might lead to an overflow of energy, resulting in heightened excitement. Expressing her hopes for the students, especially Zhou Wen, to become exceptional, Teacher Wang's gaze fell upon him, only to find him fast asleep. Dismissing the meditation session, she declared the end of the allotted time, prompting all students to rise from their meditation postures. As they stood, a palpable surge of power and determination coursed through each student, fostering a newfound sense of strength and will within them. The collective energy resonated within the group, marking the culmination of their meditation session. Teacher Wang couldn't help but notice Zhou Wen, seemingly unaffected by the forget worry Staley's influence. Curious. Zhou Wen approached her, expressing that he felt a surge of energy and restlessness. Requesting permission to roam freely, perhaps even run a marathon, Zhou Wen received a nod of approval from Teacher Wang, with the condition that he returned after three hours. Venturing into the forest for a leisurely walk, Zhou Wen took the opportunity to assess his current state. To his amazement, he discovered that his energy essence level had not only broken through the limit, but had ascended to level 11. Contemplating the nature of his essence energy flow, Zhou Wen made a realization. He had stumbled upon a third type of energy art. Lost in thought, he inadvertently collided with a dimensional monster. However, upon closer inspection, Zhou Wen recognized the creature to be a large beastly sheep that showed no signs of aggression. Observing the creature peacefully grazing on a particular type of flower, Zhou Wen speculated whether these flowers held significance as rare herbs. Intrigued by the possibility, he pondered the potential value of the floral discovery within the dimensional realm. Zhou Wen noticed another flower blooming on the ground. He approached it cautiously, intrigued by its beauty. As he reached down to pluck it, he discovered that it was firmly rooted to the ground, refusing to budge. Just as Zhou Wen was wrestling with the stubborn flower, a beast sheep materialized in front of him. The creature, its horns sharp and its eyes gleaming with anger, let out a menacing growl. 
It had been guarding the flower, and Zhou Wen's attempt to claim it had provoked its wrath. With lightning speed, the beast sheep lunged at Zhou Wen, its teeth bared and ready to strike. Zhou Wen caught off guard, instinctively ducked to avoid the attack. The beast sheep's teeth grazed Zhou Wen's hair, sending a shiver down his spine. Zhou Wen, realizing the gravity of the situation, decided to employ the power he had borrowed from the beast sheep earlier. With renewed strength, he yanked the flower from the ground, its roots finally yielding to his determined pull. The beast sheep, enraged by the loss of its precious flower, lunged at Zhou Wen again, this time aiming for the flower in his hand. Zhou Wen, anticipating the attack, nimbly dodged the beast sheep's snapping jaws. The beast sheep, undeterred by its failed attempts, launched itself onto Zhou Wen's back, its sharp hooves digging into his flesh. Zhou Wen struggled to free himself from the creature's relentless grip, but the beast sheep held on with unwavering determination. After a grueling struggle, Zhou Wen, exhausted and bruised, realized that he couldn't overpower the beast sheep. With a sigh of resignation, he relinquished the flower, offering it to the persistent creature. The beast sheep, its eyes gleaming with triumph, snatched the flower from Zhou Wen's hand and devoured it in a single gulp. Satisfied, it turned and trotted away, leaving Zhou Wen to catch his breath. Shaken but determined, Zhou Wen ventured deeper into the forest, following a path that led him to Mount La Jun. As he approached the mountain, he noticed a dense fog enveloping its peak, a sign that no one had dared to venture there in a long time. Unfazed by the eerie atmosphere, Zhou Wen pressed on, his heart pounding with anticipation. He had reached the entrance to the dungeon, the mark of Mount La Jun etched clearly on the stone wall. Without hesitation, he loaded the game and entered the depths of Mount La Jun. Zhou Wen's excitement over the newly acquired dungeon was abruptly cut short when a powerful attack slammed into his back, sending him hurtling through the air. The culprit was none other than the beast sheep, its eyes burning with a vengeful glint. The impact left Zhou Wen reeling, his waist aching with a near-broken bone. He cursed the beast sheep's cunning, realizing that the creature had waited for him to leave the protection of Mount Lao Jun before launching its sneak attack. As Zhou Wen lay on the ground, a strange sensation spread through his body. Vegetation began to sprout from his hand, rapidly enveloping his entire form. Panic seized him as he realized that he was on the verge of becoming a plant himself. Desperately, he recalled the immortal Sutra Change technique, a powerful method of self-preservation. Closing his eyes, he focused his energy on channeling the technique's power. In a blink of an eye, the vegetation covering Zhou Wen's body began to recede, retreating back into his hand. He let out a sigh of relief, grateful for the technique's timely intervention. He knew that the beast sheep's attack had been infused with a unique energy that could transform living beings into plants. A formidable power indeed. Despite the pain from his injuries, Zhou Wen stood up, his determination unwavering. He knew that the beast sheep would not rest until it had claimed its lost flower, and he was prepared to face it again. Zhou Wen recognized that the beast sheep's attack had imbued him with a unique energy that could only be countered by a specific essence energy art. He needed to find a way to dispel this energy before it transformed him into a plant-like creature. The beast sheep, its third eye wide open, watched Zhou Wen intently, its anger and surprise evident in its gaze. Zhou Wen shifted his focus back to the fog-covered path, pondering how to navigate through it. Suddenly, the beast sheep reappeared, approaching Zhou Wen with an air of mystery. Unsure of the creature's intentions, Zhou Wen remained vigilant. To his astonishment, the beast sheep charged towards the fog-covered path, and as if by magic, a clear passage opened before it. The beast sheep then turned towards Zhou Wen and nudged him towards the newly revealed path. Hesitant at first, Zhou Wen eventually followed the beast sheep's lead, venturing into the unknown. As they emerged from the fog, Zhou Wen found himself in a seemingly deserted town, its streets eerily quiet and empty. He surmised that this town might also lie within a dimensional territory, similar to the one he had encountered earlier. In the distance, Zhou Wen spotted a structure resembling a small Buddha temple. Intrigued, he approached the building, its name clearly inscribed as the Great Pure Temple. With a mix of curiosity and apprehension, Zhou Wen stepped towards the temple, ready to unravel the mysteries that lay within. As Zhou Wen stood before the Great Pure Temple, his mind raced with questions. Could this be the temple dedicated to Taishang Laojun, one of the three pure ones? Was this temple also shrouded in a similar curse? Before Zhou Wen could ponder further, the beast sheep delivered a swift kick, sending him tumbling through the temple entrance. Zhou Wen groaned as he landed inside, rubbing his sore body. He was growing increasingly irritated by the beast sheep's persistent attacks. Suddenly a voice echoed through the temple, its source unseen. The voice declared that since Zhou Wen is a disciple of the Taoist sect, he may choose one of the three talismans from the temple. Zhou Wen looked up, 
his eyes widening at the sight of three talismans lying before him, one made of jade, one of wood, and one of gold. He was perplexed, unsure of what this choice meant or what powers these talismans possessed. Observing the talismans closely, Zhou Wen noticed that the wooden talismans seemed to exude an aura of nature, a connection to the earth and its elements. He reasoned that this talisman likely represented Taisheng Lao Jun, the revered deity of nature and the path of harmony. With a newfound determination, Zhou Wen reached out and grasped the wooden talisman. As his fingers brushed against its smooth surface, a surge of energy coursed through his veins, a sensation of empowerment and connection to the natural world. Zhou Wen knew he had made the right choice. The wooden talisman held the key to unlocking the secrets of Taishang Lao Jun and the path of the Taoist sect. As Zhou Wen reached for the wooden talisman, an excruciating sensation erupted from within his arm. A forceful hatching process began, causing him to collapse to the ground in a wave of pain and exhaustion. When he regained consciousness, he found his body completely drained of energy. As he slowly sat up, a luminous orb materialized before him, pulsating with an ethereal glow. Suddenly, the orb transformed into a captivating companion beast, a being of pure energy known as the Banana Fairy. This extraordinary creature possessed the formidable Tai Yin Wind Essence Energy, a power capable of manipulating the very essence of the wind. Zhou Wen, still reeling from the unexpected transformation, was eager to witness the Tai Yin Wind Essence Energy in action. He instructed the Banana Fairy to unleash its power, and in response a whirlwind of swirling energy erupted, carrying with it an icy chill that permeated the air. With the Banana Fairy by his side, Zhou Wen felt a surge of confidence and determination. He knew that with this newfound companion, he could overcome any obstacle that stood in his path. Placing his phone back into his pocket, Zhou Wen decided it was time to return to the test monolith area. He knew that Teacher Wang would be concerned about his absence, and he didn't want to raise any suspicions. Upon his arrival at the monolith site, Teacher Wang's stern expression revealed her displeasure. She inquired sharply why he was late and told Zhou Wen that she searched the nearby area for him, but he was nowhere to be found. Zhou Wen responded, explaining that he had been casually strolling around and unintentionally ventured too far. Li Xuan playfully inquired if Zhou Wen had gone on an extensive walk due to befriending a sheep. Perplexed by the question, Zhou Wen sought clarification about the mentioned sheep. Li Xuan directed Zhou Wen's attention behind him. Turning around, Zhou Wen discovered the presence of the three-eyed legendary sheep from earlier. Unbeknownst to him, the sheep had quietly followed him out of the forest. Interestingly, the sheep now appeared significantly smaller and had assumed a more ordinary appearance compared to its legendary beast form. The next day, Zhou Wen found himself in his room, accompanied by the three-eyed sheep. He tried to entice the sheep with the flower it had devoured in the forest, but the creature remained uninterested, its gaze fixed on Zhou Wen with an unwavering intensity. Zhou Wen, sensing the sheep's determination to stay by his side, decided to seek a solution within the game. He believed that by raiding Mount Lao Jun in the virtual world, he could somehow shake off the sheep's presence. With a sense of hope, Zhou Wen opened his phone and navigated to the Mount Lao Jun dungeon. He assumed that the game would be a safe haven, mirroring the real world's lack of danger. However, his assumption was shattered when he got instantly annihilated by a dimensional creature, a consequence of the sheep's presence in the real world. Zhou Wen realized that the sheep possessed an uncanny ability to breach the boundaries between reality and the game, a trait that made it both fascinating and unsettling. Despite his mixed feelings, Zhou Wen acknowledged that he had no choice but to nurture the sheep, as any attempt to remove it from his life had proven futile. With a sigh of resignation, Zhou Wen reopened his phone and ventured into the Fire Immortal Temple, ready to face the challenges that awaited him. There, he encountered the formidable Fiery Flash group, their fiery powers illuminating the depths of the temple. They all charged towards Zhou Wen, but this time, Banana Fairy was with him. Zhou Wen instructed Banana Fairy to unleash her skill, and she responded by hurling a barrage of shockwave assaults into the sky, aiming for the fiery flashes. The shockwave struck each of the fiery flashes, instantly obliterating them all in the sky. Zhou Wen was overjoyed to witness the effectiveness of Banana Fairy's Tai Yin Wind skill, which covered a vast area, but also drained a significant amount of her essence energy. Banana Fairy collapsed from exhaustion after unleashing the attack, her essence energy completely depleted. Zhou Wen realized that this skill, while powerful, was also incredibly taxing on Banana Fairy's energy reserves. Zhou Wen recognized the immense potential of Banana Fairy's Tai Yin Wind skill. Its ability to cover a vast area presented a strategic advantage, but it also demanded a significant amount of essence energy. Banana Fairy, exhausted from the attack, collapsed, her essence energy depleted. Zhou Wen, 
undeterred by the drawbacks, saw an opportunity to maximize the skill's effectiveness. He devised a plan to lure multiple fiery flashes into a concentrated area, hoping to eliminate them all in one fell swoop. With Banana Fairy in tow, Zhou Wen swiftly retreated, drawing the fiery flashes in pursuit. As the fiery flashes closed in, Zhou Wen summoned the flying ant, commanding it to gather the scattered creatures into a tightly packed group. Defensive shields materialized around them, offering temporary protection. However, the fiery flashes, relentless in their pursuit, converged upon the shielded group, their combined attack proving too overwhelming for Zhou Wen's character. In that moment, Zhou Wen grasped the gravity of his predicament. Luring the fiery flashes together had not merely weakened them, it had transformed them into a formidable force, capable of overwhelming even his defenses. Realizing that agility and speed were paramount to avoiding such a fate, Zhou Wen vowed to enhance his movement capabilities, ensuring that he could outmaneuver and evade the fiery flash's relentless assault. Driven by his desire to enhance his mobility and evade the fiery flash's relentless attacks, Zhou Wen embarked on a quest to uncover an essence energy skill that would grant him the speed and agility he craved. With his trusty sheet by his side, he ventured into the depths of the library, hoping to unearth the secrets of such a skill. As Zhou Wen diligently perused the ancient tomes, his sheep companion, drawn to the vibrant illustrations of vegetables within a nearby book, tugged at his sleeve, urging him to explore the culinary delights depicted on its pages. Undeterred by this interruption, Zhou Wen pressed on, his determination unwavering. Amidst the labyrinth of shelves, he stumbled upon a skill named Fish Dragon's Chance, a technique that mirrored the silver-winged flash in its ability to bestow instant bursts of speed, albeit at the cost of significant energy depletion. Recognizing the potential drawbacks of this power, Zhou Wen marked Fish Dragon's chance alongside the three other skills he had previously dismissed, their shared trait of energy expenditure rendering them unsuitable for his current needs. With only one skill remaining on his list, Zhou Wen decided to focus on mastering the Dragon Soar Sky technique a fitting choice given its connection to the immortal depicted in the painting. Despite its limitations in terms of airtime, the technique promised to enhance his agility and flexibility, making it a valuable addition to his arsenal. Determined to acquire this new skill, Zhou Wen set his sights on the Dragon Gate Grottoes located in Luyang. He knew that this was where he would find the guidance and resources necessary to master the Dragon Soar Sky technique. As Zhou Wen ventured out into the bustling city streets, his attention was abruptly captured by an ominous sight. A massive dimensional beast, its form pulsating with otherworldly energy, erupted from the ground, its towering figure casting an imposing shadow over the cityscape. Zhou Wen's heart pounded with fear as he witnessed this colossal creature ascend into the sky, its presence disrupting the tranquility of the city. He wondered how this powerful beast had managed to breach the dimensional barriers, its sudden appearance a chilling reminder of the ever-present threat posed by the dimensional realm. Determined not to let fear paralyze him, Zhou Wen knew he had to act. He had to find a way to stop the dimensional beast and protect the city from its destructive potential. With renewed resolve, he set off towards the Dragon Gate Grottoes, his journey now infused with a sense of urgency and purpose. As he journeyed towards his destination, Zhou Wen's mind raced with strategies and techniques that could be employed against the formidable dimensional beast. He knew that the Dragon Soar Sky technique, with its focus on agility and maneuverability, could prove invaluable in evading the beast's attacks. Despite the daunting task that lay ahead, Zhou Wen remained undeterred. He had faced countless challenges before, and each time, he had emerged stronger and more resilient. The Dimensional Beast launched a relentless attack against Zhou Wen, prompting him to swiftly dodge the onslaught by employing his silver wings and taking flight. Witnessing the staggering destructive power of the creature's assault left Zhou Wen astonished. The Dimensional Beast, resembling a serpent, began channeling its essence energy within its mouth. In the midst of this, the army arrived and immediately engaged the beast. Helicopters hovered in the sky, armed with machine guns that relentlessly fired upon the monstrous creature, aiming to subdue its rampage. The commander, who had been pursuing the beast for a considerable time, took charge of the situation. Raising his hand, he summoned a ball of lightning energy and hurled it towards the beast. The powerful bolt pierced through the creature, instantly ending its threat. Witnessing this, Zhou Wen was left in awe. Approaching Zhou Wen, the commander inquired about his well-being. Zhou Wen reassured him that he was fine and then questioned the nature of the creature. The officer explained that it was a companion beast that had gone rogue after its master lost control during cultivation. The commander informed Zhou Wen that the military would swiftly address the situation, advising him to leave and keep the incident under wraps to avoid unnecessary panic. Zhou Wen agreed and departed. But as he glanced back at the fallen beast, 
he couldn't shake the feeling that it didn't behave like a typical companion beast bound by a contract. Returning to his room, Zhou Wen noticed the pungent odor of the beast's blood that had splattered on him during the encounter. As Zhou Wen removed his jacket, a seashell fell out, triggering a sudden emergence of golden energy strings. These ethereal strings coiled around his neck, tightening into a stranglehold. The seashell transformed into a figure, a mermaid lady. She expressed relief at evading those pursuing her and expressed regret for her creature outside. Zhou Wen, struggling to breathe, realized that the mermaid's power surpassed even that of the creature. In a horrifying turn, the mermaid opened her predator mouth, attempting to devour Zhou Wen. Suddenly, a laser pierced through the chest of the mermaid lady, causing her to collapse on the ground. The source of the laser was none other than the sheep accompanying Zhou Wen, revealing its surprising power. Witnessing this, the demonic mermaid queen, though shocked, picked herself up. She questioned how she, the queen of the sea demon race, could be subdued by a mere sheep. Taking advantage of the situation, Zhou Wen pointed at the sea demon queen, asking the sheep if it could eliminate her, anticipating that she might possess something valuable. Faced with the imminent threat, the sea demon queen pleaded for her life. She offered Zhou Wen the divine technique given to her by Father Immortal Chaos, claiming her race's immortal chaos to be the primordial immortal mentioned in myths, the first immortal born in the chaos of the universe, marking the beginning of the world. Having heard the sea demon queen's offer of the divine technique, Zhou Wen inquired if it was the essence energy art. The demon queen confirmed it, adding that Zhou Wen needed to concentrate on the orb's space to sense the power of the chaos immortal. Intrigued, Zhou Wen focused on the divine technique, causing his eyes to turn red. Observing this, the sea demon queen wore an evil smile, convinced that Zhou Wen had fallen for her deceptive trick. Zhou Wen felt a strange sensation enveloping him, and an unsettling feeling swept through his body as the entire room seemed to absorb the power of the divine technique. The divine technique itself transformed into a powerful force resembling a black hole. It dawned on Zhou Wen that he had fallen into a trap set by the Sea Demon Queen. Both Zhou Wen and the sheep found themselves being drawn towards the transformed divine technique, now a menacing black hole. Just as he was on the verge of being drawn into the black hole, his immortal sutra began circulating within his body on its own. The Sea Demon Queen declared that only those with a chaos bloodline could grasp the situation asserting that Zhou Wen would be trapped in the black hole forever. However, a sudden turn of events unfolded as the Sea Demon Queen's own divine technique started to crack, leading to a powerful energy blast resonating throughout the room. Stunned, the Sea Demon Queen couldn't believe her divine technique had shattered before her eyes. To her amazement, Zhou Wen emerged unscathed from the broken divine technique. In disbelief, she questioned him about how he remained unaffected by the chaos, and further, how he managed to acquire the divine technique for himself. However, the sheep had grown tired of the sea demon queen's incessant talk. So in a fit of rage, it launched an energy attack at her. The force of this attack obliterated the sea demon queen completely. Seizing the opportunity, the sheep absorbed the essence left behind after defeating the sea demon queen through its third eye. The chaos divine technique once held by the sea demon queen turned into an empty marble. Zhou Wen then used the divine technique marble on the sheep, causing the marble to start pulling the sheep inside. Watching this, Zhou Wen realized that there seemed to be ample space within the marble, almost like a real-world inventory. Frustrated by the suction, the sheep lashed out and struck Zhou Wen on the head. The next day, Zhou Wen brought a variety of vegetables for the sheep to enjoy. Delighted and excited about feasting on these juicy vegetables, the sheep expressed its happiness. Zhou Wen handed over the vegetables, explaining that he was heading out on a trip and wanted the sheep to stay well-fed in his absence. Outside. Zhou Wen loaded up his mobile phone and discovered information about the Dragon Gate Grottoes on a forum. The forum revealed that the Dragon Gate Grottoes stretched over one kilometer, housing more than 50 caves with over 100,000 Buddha statues. Following a dimensional storm, numerous dimensional creatures appeared in each cave, each harboring different types of monsters. Despite being one of the most deeply explored areas, the Dragon Gate Grottoes still held many mysterious places waiting to be discovered by humans. Reading this, Zhou Wen realized there were numerous caves to explore, and he wondered if he could find the dungeon mark within them, containing the technique he sought. Engrossed in his phone, he suddenly noticed the little girl from the last encounter. The little girl gazed at Zhou Wen, wishing him a good morning with a bright smile. Zhou Wen greeted her in return and decided to call her Xiao Lu. Curious about his early morning plans, Xiao Lu inquired where Zhou Wen was heading. He shared that he was going to the Dragon Gate Grottoes. Excitement lit up Xiao Lu's face, and she suggested they go together since she was also cultivating there. 
Zhou Wen, noting her enthusiasm, agreed to the idea. Xiao Lu then mentioned winning a new mobility tool in a recent TV lottery, expressing how convenient it was. Zhou Wen imagined it might be a bicycle or something similar. To his surprise, when Xiao Lu revealed the mobility tool, it turned out to be a helicopter. Astonished, Zhou Wen couldn't help but ask if Xiao Lu was some kind of princess. In response, Xiao Lu simply thought it was normal to win a helicopter in a lottery. As numerous students arrived at the Dragon Gate Grottoes, Zhou Wen and Xiao Lu joined them. Upon entering the grottoes, Zhou Wen marveled at their vastness, contemplating whether he could discover the phone dungeon mark within. Xiao Lu, curious about Zhou Wen's purpose, inquired if he had come for a mission at the Dragon Gate Grottoes. Zhou Wen explained that his goal was to obtain the Dragon Soar Sky Technique. Observing the grandeur of the grottoes, Zhou Wen wondered if he could uncover the phone dungeon mark within. Xiao Lu then asked if Zhou Wen had also come for a mission at the Dragon Gate Grottoes. He clarified that his purpose was to acquire the Dragon Soar Sky Technique. In response, Xiao Lu excitedly mentioned that the Soar Technique came from the Dimensional Essence Crystal dropped by the Lotus Cave Soar Sky Beast. She found it coincidental since her target was also the Soar Sky Beast. Xiao Lu expressed her excitement, mentioning that she could use some help. She proposed a trade and asked if Zhou Wen would be willing to assist her. Perplexed, Zhou Wen inquired about the nature of the trade. Xiao Lu explained that she needed help in defeating a Soar Sky Beast. And in return, Zhou Wen could claim any Soar Sky Technique essence crystals that dropped. Zhou Wen, although a bit skeptical about their luck in obtaining such a rare drop, agreed to the deal. Venturing into the Lotus Flower Cave within the Dragon Gate Grottoes, Zhou Wen and Xiao Lu encountered a Soar Sky Beast. As the beast charged towards them, Xiao Lu swiftly assumed her combat posture and asked Zhou Wen to capture her pose in a picture. After finishing her pose, Xiao Lu activated her butterfly cape skill, sprouting butterfly wings that allowed her to fly. The Soar Sky Beast launched an attack, but using her wings, Xiao Lu adeptly dodged its strikes and countered with her staff. The force of her counterattack was so potent that it sliced through the Soar Beast's arm. Throughout the intense battle between Xiao Lu and the Soar Sky Beast, Zhou Wen recorded the action on his phone. As he filmed, Zhou Wen noticed a dungeon mark within the cave where the Soar Sky Beast resided. In the midst of their one-sided encounter, Xiao Lu successfully defeated the Soar Sky Beast, securing its essence. She handed the Technique Essence Crystal to Zhou Wen, who noted the dungeon mark. Curious about the duration of the battle, Xiao Lu asked Zhou Wen how long it took her to vanquish the Soar Sky Beast. Zhou Wen replied that it took her one minute and five seconds. Zhou Wen marveled at the crystal and recognized Xiao Lu's incredible luck, securing the crystal on her first attempt. Another individual arrived, addressing Xiao Lu and inquiring if she had come to challenge his record once again. Seeing him, Xiao Lu greeted the man, Huang Zhu, acknowledging that she had indeed attempted but failed to surpass his record. Huang Zhu, a senior from Sunset Academy, introduced another person, Feng Qiyan, whose record had already surpassed his and was achieved in just 20 seconds. Feng Qiyan was a special recruit student at Sunset Academy and possessed a legendary creature, the Swift Saber Heavenly King, along with specialized swordsmanship. Surprised to learn that Feng Qiyan had joined Sunset Academy, Xiao Lu expressed shock. Zhou Wen intervened, suggesting they continue their activities. Xiao Lu, however, argued against it, pointing out that Feng Qi possessed a legendary creature and specialized skills, making it impossible to compete in terms of speed. She then proposed strolling through other caves, but Zhou Wen expressed his desire to explore the current area. Seeing Xiao Lu leaving, Huang Zhu decided to follow her, wanting to discuss the investment he had mentioned earlier. He hurriedly moved ahead of her. Left behind, Feng Qi and Zhou Wen found themselves alone. Feng Tui directed his intense gaze, the death eye stare, at Zhou Wen. He commended Zhou Wen for his impressive video fighting against the demonic general, but mentioned that his teacher had expressed concerns about Zhou Wen not focusing on becoming stronger. Feng Kui clarified that he never imagined Zhou Wen would spend his free time as a photographer. Hearing this, Huang Zhu turned around and apologized for his friend's abrupt behavior. With that, each person went their separate ways for their own adventures, leaving Zhou Wen alone with his phone. Eagerly, he pulled out his phone, ready to dive into the game. Upon opening his phone, Zhou Wen noticed a notification about the Dragon Gate Grottoes, realizing that it was also one of the phone's dungeons. Using his mobile, he began strolling and during his walk, he encountered Huang Zhu sitting on the ground selling some eggs. Seeing Zhou Wen, Huang Zhu inquired if he wanted to purchase a legendary creature, the Qi Lin's egg, from him. Huang Zhu explained that rock Qi Ling's had decent attributes and possessed the stone-solidified skin essence energy skill, enhancing both their defense and attack, although their offensive capabilities were somewhat lacking. He further mentioned that some rare Qi Lin's might have divine skills when they hatch. 
like the Qilin Tyrant body. Huang Zhu emphasized that the Qilin Tyrant body could transform the defense of a rock Qilin into potent attack power, making it a top-notch legendary creature. Despite praising the qualities of these eggs, Huang Zhu offered Zhou Wan a discount. However, the cost was still quite high for Zhou Wan, and he lacked the funds to take a chance on the eggs. While they talked, Xiao Lu arrived, and Huang Zhu, seeing another potential customer, tried to sell her the eggs as well. Xiao Lu declined, stating her preference for cuter pets. Watching Huang Zhu's egg selling efforts, Zhou Wen couldn't help but ask why he needed money and had to resort to setting up a stall to sell companion eggs. With a smile, Huang Zhu looked at Zhou Wen and revealed that he wanted to make a game, surprising Zhou Wen. Eventually, Zhou Wen agreed to purchase one egg, and Xiao Lu offered to choose one for him, which he accepted. Xiao Lu selected an egg, and when Zhou Wen checked its status on his mobile, he was astonished to find that she had randomly chosen a legendary egg. Returning to his apartment, Zhou Wen discovered the beast sheep lying contentedly on the ground, having devoured all the vegetables he had brought in one go. Observing the sheep's satisfied state, Zhou Wen realized that he also needed to find ways to earn money, similar to what Huang Zhu was doing. Despite Zhou Wen feeling a bit of happiness for obtaining the rare Rock Chi Lin and the sore technique at the Dragon Gate Grottoes, his joy was short-lived. Out of nowhere, Da Ting snatched the Rock Chi Lin from his hand and devoured it in one gulp. Helpless, Zhou Wen sighed and decided to divert his attention by loading up his mobile phone once again. He ventured into the underground lotus pond. Within the pond, Zhou Wen noticed the blood pattern Buddha Lotus and decided to test his new skill on it. With a leap, he utilized the Dragon Soar Sky technique. The Buddha Lotus retaliated, launching attacks at Zhou Wen, but he demonstrated quick agility, dodging each attack with precise movements. Applying force to his movements, Zhou Wen successfully avoided all the attacks. After testing his agility, Zhou Wen commanded his flying ant to eliminate the Buddha Lotus. With a swift attack, the Buddha Lotus was defeated, dropping a Lotus Heart. Zhou Wen checked the Lotus Heart status, revealing it to be a blood-patterned Buddha Heart Lotus with high physique points. Observing the high physique points, Zhou Wen had an idea. He decided to merge it with the companion egg to transform it into a mutated skeleton ant. Initiating the transformation with a mere 36% merge rate, there was only a one-third chance of success. Despite the risk, Zhou Wen considered it worthwhile, hoping that the skeleton ant, previously injured by Liz, would evolve into something more formidable. The transformation commenced, and the ant began absorbing the energy. Fortunately, the merge proved successful. Zhou Wen now possessed a mutated lotus ant with superb stats, inheriting all the skills of the blood-patterned Buddha Heart Lotus. Eager to test the ant's strength, Zhou Wen hesitated, realizing that summoning the ant into his room might lead to overcrowding. Instead, he considered using the Dragon Gate Grotto's dungeon as the perfect arena. Arriving at the Lotus Cave in the Dragon Gate Grotto's, Zhou Wen deployed his mutated lotus ant to face the Apsara beast, eager to witness its newfound strength in action. As the flying Apsara beast charged towards the mutated ant, Zhou Wen swiftly ordered an attack. The ant executed a powerful strike, successfully taking down the Apsara beast. Surprisingly, the mutated ant leaped and employed a skeleton pierce spell, delivering a brutal finishing blow to the Apsara beast. Zhou Wen, witnessing this display, felt a mix of amazement and shock. The defeated Apsara beast dropped a crystal, and upon inspecting its status, Zhou Wen noticed it possessed high speed, but lacked strength in other areas. Zhou Wen contemplated the idea of merging it with the mutated ant, envisioning the possibility of obtaining a flying lotus ant. Initiating the mutation process on his mobile, Zhou Wen was taken aback as the merge success rate displayed a mere 0.6%. Observing the low merge success rate, Zhou Wen reconsidered and decided to feed the Apsara Beast Crystal to Da Ting. As Da Ting received the crystal, it began emitting a powerful energy, undergoing evolution with a resounding impact. Post-evolution, Da Ting emerged stronger than before, now belonging to the Legend class, but surpassing most creatures within that category. Despite Da Ting's enhanced abilities, Zhou Wen was perplexed by the status indicating its life providence as hearing the world. In an attempt to understand this enigmatic description, Zhou Wen checked the details, only to find an explanation stating it meant Praying into the world with ears instead of eyes. The explanation remained vague for Zhou Wen, prompting him to experiment and try to comprehend it himself. As Da Ting unleashed the spell, radio-like waves radiated from its position. Observing this, Zhou Wen had a realization. This was seeing with his ears. By closing his eyes and focusing on his hearing, Zhou Wen found that his surroundings appeared in his mind. With this newfound perception, he could even see past walls and discern what was happening outside his room. Excited by the potential of this ability, 
Zhou Wen envisioned using it alongside the Apsara technique to conquer the Temple of the Fire Immortal. Without wasting any time, he swiftly opened his mobile phone and embarked on a journey to the Temple of the Fire Immortal. Zhou Wen's goal was clear, to reach the summit of the temple, and now, equipped with the World with Ears spell, he felt confident in his ability to achieve this feat. As Zhou Wen began ascending the stairs, a group of flashes charged towards him. Swiftly reacting, Zhou Wen commanded his flying ant to take action. The fire ant soared into the air, deftly navigating through the group of flashes, enticing them to chase after it. Capitalizing on the distraction created by the flying ant, Zhou Wen focused on the remaining flashes. Utilizing his Dragon's Gate Apsara technique, he skillfully dodged the incoming attacks. Jumping around and evading with ease, Zhou Wen managed to elude the flash's assaults, demonstrating his agility and finesse in the process. Landing on the stairs, Zhou Wen began climbing with the hope that he could outpace the gathering flashes using his Apsara technique. As he bolted up the stairs, a sizable flock of flashes amassed behind him. The tension grew as the flashes coordinated their attacks. Feeling the pressure, Zhou Wen leaped into the air and summoned his flying ant. In a swift move he merged with the flying ant, entering the silverwing flying ant companion state. The transformation endowed him with wings, turning Zhou Wen into the silverwing flash, a formidable entity prepared to confront the approaching flashes. Summoning the banana fairy, Zhou Wen unleashed her great wind attack on the flashes, freezing them in their tracks. Taking advantage of the distraction, Zhou Wen leaped and successfully reached the summit. From there, he observed a burning spawn point for the flash beasts. Utilizing his great yin wind, Zhou Wen destroyed the spawn point, revealing a monolith with ancient imperial sutra inscriptions. As he laid eyes on it, his heart raced. Suddenly a sharp pain surged through his heart, leading him to believe that the ancient imperial sutra might carry a curse. The pain surged through Zhou Wen with such intensity that it felt as if he were being torn apart. Something inside his heart scratched relentlessly from within, the agony threatening to overwhelm him. The intensity of the pain pushed Zhou Wen to the brink of losing consciousness. The immortal sutra within his body seemed immobilized, and he began to cough up blood, with the word imperial engraved on his heart. Amidst the torment, Zhou Wen's heart rate returned to normal suddenly, and the pain ceased abruptly. The distressing episode concluded, leaving Zhou Wen relieved as his heartbeat settled back to its regular rhythm. Having successfully learned the ancient imperial sutra, and with his lost immortal sutra remaining unresponsive, Zhou Wen sat at the summit of the fire temple. There, he discovered a stone sword within the monolith. Thinking that this time the reward was a stone sword instead of a companion pet, Zhou Wen prepared to grasp the sword. To his surprise, as Zhou Wen reached for the sword, his hand passed through it as if it were a spirit. Shocked, he realized that he couldn't physically touch it. Zhou Wen attempted multiple times to touch the phantom sword, but each time his hand simply passed through it. Puzzled and slightly disappointed, he questioned whether all his efforts to reach the summit would result in receiving an intangible reward like a phantom sword instead of the expected mythic pet. Suddenly, a knock on the door interrupted his contemplation. A voice announced the arrival of a registered mail for Zhou Wen. Surprised, he wondered how Wu Yang Ting, usually engrossed in exploring dimensional areas, found the time to send him mail. Curious, Zhou Wen opened the package, discovering an Shiwan Crystal Shop business card inside, complete with a number at the bottom. Eager to explore this mysterious crystal shop, Zhou Wen immediately dialed the provided number, only to be met with the response that the number did not exist. Undeterred, Zhou Wen, intrigued by the name of the crystal shop, resolved to visit it someday. Suddenly, Li Xuan arrived and greeted Zhou Wen. Zhou Wen, noticing him, inquired about the reason for Li Xuan's presence. Li Xuan revealed that he had successfully broken through to the legend class. However, Zhou Wen's reaction was subdued. He neither appeared happy nor excited, merely offering a nonchalant congratulations. Perplexed by Zhou Wen's lack of enthusiasm, Li Xuan questioned if Zhou Wen understood the significance of advancing to the legend class. He explained that reaching legend class marked a crucial turning point for life classes as individuals in this class would awaken a legend life providence that would stay with them forever. Li Xuan also shared the news that Feng Chiu Yan had surpassed Senior Huang Ji's record in killing the Apsara monkey through his life providence, known as the Heavenly King of Quickblade. Upon hearing Li Xuan's news, Zhou Wan became curious about the life providence he had awakened. Li Xuan, excited by the question, proudly showcased his life providence, which he had named the Immortal Master of Combat. This providence granted him a significant buff to both life force and defense, allowing his injuries to self-recover as long as the attacks didn't prove fatal. Li Xuan believed that this ability was akin to possessing an almost undying body. In the midst of explaining, Li Xuan inadvertently stepped on the sheep beast. 
prompting Zhou Wen to order a retreat. Unexpectedly, the Sheep Beast retaliated, delivering a powerful kick that sent Li Xuan flying. He landed face down on the floor, leaving Zhou Wen concerned as he inquired about Li Xuan's well being. Hurt and shocked by the Sheep Beast's unexpected attack, Li Xuan couldn't believe that his defense had been broken by a mere kick. Convinced that it had to be a fluke orchestrated by Zhou Wen, Li Xuan found the situation almost impossible to accept. Soon, an ambulance arrived, and paramedics carefully lifted Li Xuan onto a stretcher, transporting him to the hospital for medical attention. While on the stretcher, Li Xuan remained bewildered, grappling with the notion of someone, especially a shut-in like Zhou Wen, suddenly advancing to the legend class. The confusion lingered in his mind as he pondered this unexpected turn of events. Zhou Wen became aware that his increasing strength was attracting attention despite his seemingly inactive lifestyle. Recognizing the need to avoid suspicion, he decided to incorporate regular training into his routine. In a dedicated training room, Zhou Wen stood armed with a baseball bat, facing a baseball throwing machine. Activating the machine, Zhou Wen set the difficulty to normal, ready to engage in a training regimen to maintain a low profile while continuing to enhance his abilities. The machine's announcement signaled the commencement of the training session, challenging Zhou Wen to hit all the projectiles within the specified time. Eager to showcase his skills, Zhou Wen activated his earring, using it to tune into the movement of the balls inside the throwing machine. With a heightened sense, Zhou Wen could perceive even the slightest adjustments in the trajectory of the projectiles. He contemplated that by capturing these subtle changes, he could achieve perfect timing in hitting the ball. Suddenly the first ball shot out, and Zhou Wen skillfully struck it with precision using his bat. Subsequent balls followed, and Zhou Wen continued to display pinpoint accuracy with each hit. Engrossed in his training, Zhou Wen didn't notice Feng Qi Yan entering the room. Upon seeing Zhou Wen's remarkable accuracy, Feng Qi Yan was amazed, thinking that Zhou Wen was merely showcasing by hitting balls with closed eyes at a normal speed. Feng Qi Yan decided to challenge him. He increased the speed of the next ball, expecting to outpace Zhou Wen. However, to Feng Qi Yan's astonishment, Zhou Wen not only kept up with the increased speed, but even hit the ball before him. Shocked and in disbelief, Feng Tui Yan couldn't fathom how someone could be faster than him. The realization left him genuinely shocked. Another ball shot out from the machine, and as Feng Qi Yan prepared to strike it, Zhou Wen unexpectedly intervened, snatching the shot away. This pattern continued for the next balls, leaving Zhou Wen to skillfully intercept each one with flawless precision. While Feng Qi Yan struggled to hit even one, the sight left Feng Qi Yan sweating and in disbelief as he questioned why Zhou Wen could touch the balls, especially with his quick blade life providence. After successfully hitting all the shots, Zhou Wen calmly walked away, leaving Feng Qi Yan bewildered. Unable to comprehend the situation, Feng Qi Yan shouted after Zhou Wen, informing him that one ball remained. To his surprise, as the final ball approached Zhou Wen, he effortlessly struck it without even turning or looking in its direction. The exceptional display of skill further baffled Feng Qi Yan. Feng Qi Yan, witnessing Zhou Wen's extraordinary feat, was left in shock. It seemed as if Zhou Wen had a preternatural awareness of the ball's trajectory. Suddenly, it dawned on Feng Qi Yan that Zhou Wen closed his eyes during the practice, relying on his senses to perceive the changes in his surroundings. The realization struck Feng Qi Yan with a profound understanding. In that brief sparring session, he gained enlightenment from Zhou Wen's unique approach. Overwhelmed with shame for having judged Zhou Wen based on appearances, Feng Qi Yan recognized the depth of Zhou Wen's skill and insight. Meanwhile, Zhou Wen patiently waited for the training machine to cease its operation. Upon hearing it come to a stop, he began to make his way back, intending to return to his gaming activities. However, before he could leave, Feng Qi Yan approached and respectfully took a seat in front of him. Expressing his admiration, Feng Qi Yan expressed his desire for Zhou Wen to become his coach. In response, Zhou Wen explained that he didn't have the time to take on the role of Feng Qi Yan's coach. Feng Qi Yan, realizing his own shortcomings through their brief interaction, began to plead with Zhou Wen to be his coach. Convinced that guidance from Zhou Wen could greatly benefit him, Feng Qi Yan assured Zhou Wen of timely payment for his services. While Zhou Wen contemplated the request, he received a notification on his phone indicating that he had already received payment from Feng Qi Yan. Astonished at the speed of Feng Qi Yan's response, Zhou Wen was impressed by his promptness. Having received 50,000 yuan from Feng Qi Yan and considering his previous agreement to invest in Senior Huang Zhu's game, Zhou Wen found it hard to resist the allure of the money. Succumbing to a bit of greed, he eventually agreed to be Feng Qi Yan's coach. Feng Qi Yan, determined to learn and grow, emphasized the need for raising his comprehensions. Back at his apartment, Zhou Wen had just finished taking a shower and was now lounging on a couch, loading up his mobile phone. 
He chuckled, amazed at how he had become Feng Kui Yan's coach so effortlessly. In the game, Zhou Wen encountered the cloth character Demonized General. Zhou Wen, equipped with his flying ant and mutated ant summons, faced the challenge of the paper Demonized General in the game. After playing for a while, he realized that, according to the rock-paper-scissors restraint concept, the start-slashing-knife aura representing scissors should be capable of heavily damaging the paper Demonized General. However, Zhou Wen hesitated to use the slashing-knife aura, knowing that failure would deplete all his vitality. Despite Zhou Wen's efforts, as he prepared to use the slashing knife aura on the demonized general, the general launched an attack that sent Zhou Wen flying. Zhou Wen was surprised that even with the flying ant and mutated ant in the battle, the demonized general could still focus on attacking him. Undeterred, Zhou Wen commanded his lotus ant to engage the demonic general in combat. Upon receiving the order, the lotus ant used its poisonous toad skill, but the attack was absorbed by the black ball summoned by the demonized general. Witnessing the unexpected turn of events, Zhou Wen was left in disbelief and shock. Suddenly, the black ball ascended into the sky, releasing a powerful purple energy in all directions. Seizing the opportunity, Zhou Wen, using star slashing, teleported behind the demonic general and executed a sneak slash attack. The attack successfully dispersed the demonic general, but it emitted a strong energy surge during its dissipation. Zhou Wen shielded himself with his lotus defensive ball, yet the exertion drained all his vitality. Executing this attack, Zhou Wen came to the realization that the Cloth General's ability wasn't just telekinetic. It involved manipulating the space between the two black balls he summoned. Fortunately, the Lotus Buddha Shield proved effective in defending against the poisonous fog emanating from the Blood Lotus. As the General dropped a companion egg, Zhou Wen was genuinely shocked. Don't forget to like and comment for the next part. Join our Discord for the name of the book and subscribe for more videos from us.